examination of Mr. Clark. That's what we, where we will resume. Uh, Mr. Allen. Thank you, Your Honor. And we had left on um, People's Exhibit 697, page 104, and we just need the TV turned back on. Okay, Mr. Clark, we had, um, the note that I had was that we stopped just before getting into the 6.34 a.m. Uh, entry on the timeline. Can you tell us what that entry is? So that is an outgoing message from Mr. Stout to the defendant saying just landed in Denver and the defendant didn't respond. The next entry is at 6.35 a.m. What is that? The message from Gannon's phone sent to uh, Landon, uh, Gannon's mom, saying, I'm heading out with the neighbor searchers. And then um, Landon responded with, find my baby, please. Did, was there any um, evidence that the defendant went out searching at that particular time in the morning? No, uh, in fact, as you'll see uh, in a few minutes, the Tiguan backs into the garage and the garage door closes. Okay. The next entry is at 6.36 a.m. What is that entry? This is where the Tiguan backs into the garage and, uh, and, and stays there until uh, it leaves to go uh, to the airport again to pick up Al. At this particular entry is this uh, video that we watched earlier this morning, People's Exhibit 219 from across the street of 6627? That's the one, yes. Okay. Want to orient us on this next little bit of the timeline. There's a, another page from the cast report. Uh, looks to be that it's bracketing a p particular period of time. Why is that? Um, this is just a show from 638 until 659 that the phones didn't leave the area of the Mandan residence. And when you say the phones, what do you mean by the phones? Um, the defendant's phone and um, I believe it's a uh, Gannon's phone. Okay. And okay. The 6.38 a.m. to 6.55 a.m., um, is there a text string? There is. It's between the defendant and Mr. Stout, and it begins with good. But why were you ignoring? I was worried you didn't make flight. Mr. Stout responds with not ignoring. I lay down. I airport. Haven't really slept. Flight leaves here at 7.30. The defendant responds with, I understand you are upset, but you are my teammate, and parents stick together and not take it out on each other. He's coming home today. Uh, Mr. Stout replies with, how's Lena? And the defendant says, she is tired, and Landon said they are coming, and if they could stay. I said they had to ask you that I wasn't making decisions like that. And Mr. Stout says, yes, in times like this, we put our differences aside. Uh, and he forwards on a text message that he received saying, hello, Al, my name is uh, Janie uh, Cadenas. I have been in contact with- Let me, let me stop you for oh, sorry. just really quickly, just so the court reporter is aware of the spelling on the name, spell the name that you just said. Of course, uh, J-A-N-E-Y-C-A-D-E-N-A-S. Okay, so pick up where you left off there, please. Uh, it says, I have been in contact with your wife throughout the night. I am a neighbor here in Lorson Ranch. Canberra gave me your info. I wanted to let you know I sent T a Facebook message that the news sent me with their contact info. They said, if you can call their newsroom, KKTV, they can get a statement released ASAP. We need someone from the family to call our newsroom. If you know them or know someone who does, please pass along our information. It's a 719 number with the last four X'd out. Um, praying for you all. We are currently getting a meal train set up for you all so you have one less thing to worry about. Please do not hesitate to reach out if you need anything. Let me, um, let me ask you about that particular text message. Does this indicate again um, the neighborhood mobilizing trying to search for and help and support the family while Gannon was missing. They really came together at this time, yes. It's indicative of that. Uh, there was in that prior text message um, where the defendant texted to uh, Mr. Al Stauk, I understand you're upset, but you and my teammate and parents stick together and not take it on each other. He is coming home today. The he reference there, um, does context tell you who that he was? Uh, the he in, in reference is Gannon. I don't want to be uh, ridiculously obvious, but did Gannon come home that day? No. Uh, picking up after that long text message that Al got that he passed on to the defendant about the meal trains and all that, did the defendant respond to that? She did. She replied, okay, I don't agree, but it's your choice. Mr. Stout, Stout replied with just got that. Uh, referencing that that message from uh, Ms. Uh, Cadenas, 
And then uh, the defendant responds with, yes, that's Jane. She is out here searching. She's out her searching with us. Mr. Stout replies with, call the news, please. Uh, the defendant says, it's on five stations. Please don't change your plan because I want you guys to be able to be together, but I'm probably going to stay somewhere else, Z. So let me break in there for just a moment. Um, what is this in reference to when talking about staying somewhere else and doesn't want to um, break up the plans? Landon is, is coming out to help with for Gannon. And is this in reference to Landon potentially staying at the 6627 Mandan Drive house, the Stouck residence? That, that was the plan, yes. And uh, the defendant is indicating that she's going to stay somewhere else while Landon is in town. That's what that means, yes. Okay. So jumping in after that, did, the, did Mr. Stouck respond to that? Um, he did. He said, then do that. And the defendant says, okay, I don't want anyone here cursing and flipping out. Thank you, Z. Well, I'm heading out to the searches. Mr. Stouck says, okay. The defendant says, can you call me? And uh, Mr. Stouck says, in a minute. And then the defendant says, well, somebody saw him, but I guess you are too busy talking to someone else instead. Uh, there's a couple of references here um, coming from the defendant's phone about heading out to the searches and that kind of thing. Similar to the question I asked a, a moment ago when this was brought up before, did the defendant ever leave during this period to go out help with any searches? She did not. Jumping to the next uh, period of the timeline, there's an entry for 6.57 a.m., 6.58 a.m., and 6.59 a.m. Just give a summary of, of what we're looking at for those three entries. It's just back and forth calls. With that last message, the defendant sent saying, someone saw him, but I guess you're too busy. She got the results she wanted because Al called and they spoke for 52 seconds. And the fact that those three phone calls happened, is that reflected in the table of the cast report just above that? It is. And does that indicate general vicinity of the phone while it's being used? It does. And where was that? Still in the area of the Mandan residence. Moving on to People's Exhibit 697, page 204. So give us a reference as to the source of information for this portion of the timeline. It's still the same sources. We have the download from uh, Mr. Stalk's phone, the download from the defendant's phone, the download from Harley's phone, and the FBI cast report. The download from Gannon's phone and the blue line that extends across uh, this time period uh, indicating Gannon is still missing. Okay. And then the date and time frame for this particular portion of the timeline? We're still on Tuesday, uh, January 28th of 2020. And this section, page two, looks from 6.59 a.m. to 1 p.m. All right. So starting with that first timed entry, 6.59 a.m. to 7.15 a.m., what is that? So you recall the last page ended with a phone call between the two, between the defendant and uh, Mr. Stout. And then this message immediately following saying, OMG, what happened to Albert from the defendant? Mr. Stout replies with, I'm trying not to lose it in the airport. The defendant says, please don't push me about the location. I don't understand things if you don't communicate. Mr. Stout replies with, text it. The defendant replies with, last night around 6.30 p.m., we saw him running in the rain off Academy and Fountain Road area. The boy was running westbound on Fountain Road. Good luck on your search and sending prayers to you and your family. I can't imagine what you guys are going through. I was telling you to see what you want me to do. We have over 100 people searching. Was that basically a text message that, um, that the defendant receives from somebody else and then forwarded this to Al? That's what it is, yes. Okay, uh, how does that con conversation continue? Uh, Mr. Stout says, do what you think is best. Defendant says, and willing. And then Mr. Stout says, if he was in that side of town, the he was taken and was trying to run. I think he meant then he was taken and was trying to run. The defendant replies with, wait, where is that? The bad Burger King? Okay, a team is going that way. Lena can't go to school. She is falling out crying. What's our plan when you get here? Mr. Stout replies with, let me get there and we will make a plan. The defendant says, okay. Landon said she is going to whatever neighborhood that he was seen last night not, and knocking. How did Jane contact you? Everyone said she is trying to get me, but I haven't gotten anything. Mr. Stalk says, text, that one I sent. The defendant says, okay, neighbors were asking me. And Mr. Stalk says, that's all I got.
And then there's a cast report page um, just above a big chunk of time from 6.59 a.m. to 7.56 a.m. What is that in reference to? Uh, that's in reference to uh, the defendant's phone um, and Gannon's phone, and they haven't left the Lorison Ranch area. So the, the area where the 6627 Mandan Drive residence is? They're, they're still at or near their home at this time, yes. Okay. The next entry is at 7.02 a.m. What is that? Uh, during this text string between the defendant and Mr. Stout, Gannon's phone makes an outgoing call for six minutes and 49 seconds to Landon. Again, um, this is during the time that Gannon is missing. Um, based on who was at the home, who was using the phone at this time? Uh, it was the defendant. 7.17 a.m., what's that entry? Um, the defendant's phone uh, makes a search for Priceline.com, find cheap car rentals. Is it on this day, January 28th, later on, um, where the defendant actually rented a, uh, that white Kia Rio? Uh, she did, yes. At 7.25 a.m., what's the next entry? Uh, Harley messages the defendant with a KKTV contact request. Uh, they reached out over social media and Harley screenshotted that and sent it to the defendant. And then the defendant calls KKTV at 7.27 a.m. for about a minute and a half. The next entry is at 7.27 a.m. to 7.41 a.m. What is that? The defendant tells Mr. Stalk over text, talk to the news or talk to news. Mr. Stalk replies, okay. Defendant says, yeah, I tagged a few of them in an Insta post. Uh, she's referencing Instagram, uh, which is another social media platform. Principal just called PPO. I think that's supposed to mean two. Principal just called two. Do you have the case number? I can't find the card and the news needs it. And then uh, Mr. Stalk replies with Deputy Sean Donahue, El Paso County Sheriff's Office with a phone number and a case number. Um, the defendant says, are you going to be driving a loft and then changes it to a lot. Um, Mr. Stout says, I assume so. Why? The defendant says, okay, I was going to get a small economy car for miles and for gas. You think that's okay? Mr. Stout says, sure. The defendant says, have you left Denver? Mr. Stout says, on the plane, airplane mode, only like a 30 minute flight. The next entry is from 7.36 a.m. to 7.37 a.m. What is that? Uh, during this text back and forth between the defendant and Mr. Stout, Harley's trying to FaceTime the defendant twice uh, with no connection. The next entry is at 7.56 a.m. to 8.13 a.m. What is that? It's another local person with a 719 area code. That's a text message to the defendant saying, hey T, any updates? How can we help right now? What are police saying? It's Christine Garcia, Jocelyn's mom. And the defendant replies with, my coworker has a video of a boy running. Did he have jeans? Uh, white shoes and a blue jacket, and then um, sends the, uh, it's like a little video clip of a, of a ring uh, floodlight. And uh, was this another one of the tips that came in of potential sighting of Gannon that was chased down and determined to not be Gannon? Yes. The next entry is at 8.13 a.m., and then there's uh, a line above the timeline to a page of the cast report, page 30. What is that uh, in reference to the cash report for this period of time? So it's the movement of the vehicle and the phone or, uh, of the defendant. So we have the Life 360, uh, we have the telematics off of the Tiguan, and we have the towers and uh, sectors that service the phone's calls, text messages, data sessions. As the Tiguan left uh, the residence at 8.13 a.m. and went to the Colorado Springs Airport. The next entry is at 8.23 a.m. What is, what is that entry? Landon messaged Gannon's phone saying, can you send me the pics of him at the store or anything you have? Was that text message responded to? No. The next entry is at 8.26 a.m. What is that? The defendant Googled uh, employee parking at COS, which is the airport code for Colorado Springs Airport. The next entry is at 8.29 a.m. What is that? Uh, Mr. Stalk messages uh, the defendant saying, just landed, you picking me up? And the defendant responds with yes. And then there's a entry at 8.30 a.m. Um, with a diagonal line back to that cast report. Uh, wh why is that connected to the cast report at that particular time? So we have um, the telematics, the Life360 corroborating uh, it's two different data sources, one's from the phone, one's from the car, that the Tiguan and the defendant's phone arrived at the Colorado Springs Airport at the same time. And then we have a receipt that was recovered in the Tiguan, exhibit number 325, that shows the ticket was pulled at 8.30 a.m. 
uh, that, that, that morning. Corresponding with that same time frame, 8.30 a.m., there's a bracket going above uh, that says defendant at the Colorado Springs Airport. Why is it bracketed in that particular fashion? Um, all of these events that occurred during that time, this is when the defendant is at the Colorado Springs Airport renting the Kia uh, Rio and picking up Mr. Stout. Okay. The entry at 8.32 a.m., what is that? That's a FaceTime uh, for 16 seconds between Harley and the defendant. 8.33 a.m., what is that? Another FaceTime for 15 seconds between the uh, between Harley and the defendant. What is that, 8.37 a.m.? A message from the defendant saying almost, or okay, almost inside to Mr. Stout. Did Mr. Stout respond to that? No. The next entry at 8.42 a.m., describe that. Harley uh, attempted to FaceTime the defendant, but it did not connect. And then there's a second entry at 8.42 a.m.? The defendant, uh, within that same minute, FaceTimes Harley and, and it connected for 47 seconds. Then there's a time entry for 8.44 p p.m. to 8.48 a.m. Is that a typo? Oh, yep, my mistake. That's a, that should say a.m. So from 8.44 a.m. to 8.48 a.m., describe that entry. Um, it's uh, text messages with picture messages between the defendant and Harley. Um, the defendant asks what shoes are at the front door. Harley responds with a picture of shoes by the front door. The defendant says, are you working? Harley says, no. The defendant says, pull your car in the garage. Harley says, I don't have work until TMMR, which is short for tomorrow. Okay, right now? And the defendant says, yes. So I want to um, ask about the, the picture in the shoes. Um, did you learn that in the course of this investigation, the defendant's shoes were located in the laundry room that had Gannon's blood on them? Yes, they were. And then th there's a request here from the defendant to Harley to pull her car into the garage. Uh, was there blood found on the boards that the cars would park over? Yes, there were. Okay. 8.50 a.m., what is that entry? Uh, the defendant picks up Al um, at the airport in Colorado Springs Airport in the rented Kia Rio. And then as it relates to the VW Tiguan assigned to the defendant, um, does it stay at the airport now until later the evening, uh, this evening? It does. It stays in the short-term parking lot until 7.02 p.m. On, on this Tuesday. Is there any indication as to Gannon's location during this time frame? Gannon's in the back of the Tiguan. Uh, 8.54 a.m., what is that entry? Harley responded to um, the defendant saying cars pulled in. Did the defendant respond to that text message? No. There's another uh, reference to a cast report, page 31, that's bracketing a particular period of time from 9 a.m. to 9.22 a.m. What is the significance of that page of the cast report as it relates to the timeline? Um, the defendant uh, and Mr. Stalk are returning back to the Mandan residence uh, from the airport. During this time, they leave at, at 9, and they get uh, to the residence at 8.15 a.m., and then they stay in the area until 9.22 a.m. The Between 9.09 a.m. and 9.14 a.m., uh, did the defendant make a series of phone calls to uh, two different people? Yes, one's an unknown, but it has the same uh, South Carolina uh, 843 area code. He spoke for three minutes and 30 seconds, and then two calls to uh, the defendant's mom at 9.13, 9.14. Just so that the record is clear, the defendant's mom's name is what? Uh, Deborah Locklear. At 9.15 a.m., um, is that what you just referred to, that uh, defendant and Mr. Stauk returned to the 6627 Mandan Drive driving that white Kia Rio? That's correct. Tell the jury about 9.19 uh, a.m. and 9.22 a.m. 9.19 a.m., KKTV News uh, calls the defendant, but the call is sent to voicemail. And then at 9.22 a.m., uh, the El Paso County Sheriff's Office calls the defendant and uh, connects for six minutes and 26 seconds. The next entry is at 10.10 a.m. What is that? This is a group uh, message uh, outbound that Harley sent to um, a whole lot of her uh, friends and associates saying, hey, guys, my little brother is missing, so if you could keep an eye out. We haven't seen him since 4 p.m. yesterday. He could be anywhere now because we know he's been traveling in a vehicle. He's only 11. I'll keep you guys updated. So if you guys could just keep an eye out, thank you. The next entry is at 11 a.m. and there's a bracketed um, portion above that goes to cast report page 32 
and goes to 11.30 a.m. What's the significance of the cash report as it relates to this portion of the timeline? It's more movement of um, the uh, Life360 uh, off of the defendant's phone, um, the house, um, and just, just the, the phone's moving um, around Lorson Ranch now. Okay. <clears throat> and then the entry for 11 a.m., what is that? Uh, the El Paso County Sheriff's Office does a social media release with the first bulletin of Gannon uh, missing. Is that essentially the same bulletin that the authorities in the Pensacola area um, used to give a tentative identification of Gannon when they discovered his remains? This is the one, yes. 11.03 a.m., what is that entry? Uh, it's a message from an unknown, uh, well, we, we know who, but... Um, from an area code 210 uh, saying, we have hit up all the fountain businesses and Walmarts. Uh, message to the defendant, the defendant replies back with thank you with a smiley face. And just so the record is clear, you said that um, we know who it is. Um, who is that person? I, I can't recall. They weren't um, a significant okay. player in this. Okay. 11.09 a.m. to 11.20 a.m. appears to be another text string. Tell the jury about that text string. It's messages between the defendant and Mr. Stout. It starts at 11.09, the defendant says, you inside. Mr. Stout says, yes. The defendant says, any luck? What are they doing, babe? Mr. Stout says, talking. The defendant says, what are they saying? Mr. Stout says, they misread the footage. He doesn't think he was here. And the defendant says, what? Are you kidding me? OMG. What is that a reference to? Uh, more of the neighborhood um, social media where they're capturing young males that, that possibly could be Gannon in the neighborhood. Uh, trying to find a last known uh, visual of, of Gannon. So does this indicate that Mr. Stouk is out trying to do that and the defendant is texting him while he's doing that? It, it indicates that. And again, it's it's not Gannon. Okay. The person that they thought could be Gannon, it's not Gannon. The next text string is at 11.43 a.m. What is that? Uh, this is between the defendant and Harley. The defendant says, Albert said to tell Lena to work on her clothes uh, room. Harley says, okay. And the defendant says, before everyone gets there. Did Al, uh, Mr. Stouk, ever uh, relay that type of information to anybody that he was concerned about Lena working on cleaning up her clothes in her room? No. The next uh, entry is at 12 p.m. and it points up to page 33 of the cast report. What's the significance of that page of the cast report for this particular portion of the timeline? Uh, the defendant's phone left the resident and traveled northwest uh, out of Lorison Ranch. The next entry is at 12.30 p.m. What is that? Uh, the sheriff's office is doing their second neighborhood canvas. And we had um, testimony from Deputy Hess. Uh, is this when Deputy Hess is going through the neighborhood? It is looking for any type of um, witnesses or video cameras, things like that. The next entry is at 12.49 p.m. What is that entry? From the 210 area code, a uh, message to the defendant saying, there is a family with hunting and tracking canines that would like to assist. Would you like me to put them in contact with you? And the defendant replies with, could you give me their number? I will talk to my husband and add it to our list. We are so overwhelmed and no one has slept. So is this basically an offer coming in from somebody in the community to offer help with searching canines? It is, yes. Did the defendant ever circle back with that person to enlist their help? No, she did not. The next entry is at 12.57 p.m. What is that? Uh, the defendant Googled, can Nintendo find my Switch on her phone? Is that the last entry for page two of four of People's Exhibit 697? Yes. Moving on to page three of four of People's Exhibit 697. What are the sources of information for page uh, three of four of People's Exhibit 697? Uh, we have Al's, uh, Mr. Stout's cell phone download, the defendant's cell phone download, Harley's cell phone download, the FBI cast report, and uh, Gannon's phone is not on this timeline anymore. And then does the blue line um, indicating Gannon is missing extend for the duration of this particular portion of the timeline? It does, Gannon is still missing. What is the time brackets for this particular on um, page three of four of People's Exhibit 697? We're still on Tuesday, uh, January 28th, and we're looking from 1 p.m. to 7 p.m. now. At 1.03 p.m., there's an entry that points up to cast page 33, cast report page 33. 
in that brackets all the way to 223 p.m. What is the significance of that um, portion of the bracketing? It's just showing that the phone left the residence, kind of traveled around uh, in Security Wildfoot area, and then came back uh, just south uh, west of, of the residence. And when you say the phone, who's, which phone are you talking about? Oh, I'm sorry, uh, the defendant's phone. Does this also include the Live 360 that is assigned to the defendant? It does, and, and during this time, they did um, their initial uh, meet uh, at the Starbucks. Uh, they call it a field interview, um, and the data supports the device being at the Starbucks uh, during that interview. And did we hear the audio for that interview with uh, um, former Detective Jessica Bethel? We did. So looking at the entry for 1.03 p.m., um, what is indicated there? Um, the defendant has a 1 minute and 14 second FaceTime call with Harley. And then at 1.28 p.m.? Detective uh, did the field interview, the initial meet uh, with the defendant and Mr. Stalk at the Starbucks located at 6845 Fountain Mesa Parkway. And that was just an audio recording uh, for exhibit number 335. The next entry is at 1.40 p.m. What is that? Uh, Deborah Locklear, um, the defendant's mom, sent an email from her work. I, I blocked out the company for privacy. Um, it was an email that you can text a phone. And the message read, do you think he ran away? Uh, this message was read at 2.56 p.m. and responded, no, by the defendant. And as it relates to, um, you know, you just mentioned that you blocked out the, the totality of the email address except for the at and then the dot com. And then we, you've had X's for some of the phone numbers. Uh, in some of the prior testimony during this case, uh, have some phone numbers been talked about in testimony? Yes, they have. And have those phone numbers then started receiving a lot of calls from random people all over the place? They have to where uh, I know for one, they had to change their number shortly after uh, getting off the stand. And is that why these are blocked out for privacy purposes? Yes. Okay. Uh, 2.16 p.m., uh, what is that entry? Um, it's an outgoing multimedia message, so a uh, text message that contains a picture in it of a uh, young man wearing a blue coat. Uh, it's picture number 6133 taken from the defendant's phone, and this was forwarded to um, Sergeant Hess with the El Paso County Sheriff's Office. Um, is this another tip that was run down and determined to not be Gannon? Correct. We, we positively identified who this young male was, and it was not Gannon. Okay. The next entry is at 2.23 p.m. What is that? It's a message from Harley to uh, the defendant saying WYD, which is short for what are you doing? And then attached a picture of um, one of their dogs and sent it to the defendant. Did the defendant respond to that? No. The next uh, entry above the timeline is from 3.06 p.m. to 4.51 p.m. And it points to cast report page 34. What's the significance of that page of the report? for this period of time on the timeline? The defendant is not at home. Um, he's driving, um, she goes by the airport and continues north on Powers. And when you say that the defendant is not at home, is that because her phone and the Life 360 is showing her uh, being away from home? That's correct. We have the Life 360 and the, the towers and sectors corroborating uh, when and where the, the device is at. Okay. The next entry on the timeline at 4.03 p.m. is what? Mr. Stalk requesting the address to the El Paso County Sheriff's Office from the defendant. He says, send address, and she replies with 27 East Bermajo Avenue, cross 4 Courthouse, OTS, which is short for the Office of the Sheriff. And is that the actual ad address for the Sheriff's Office? It is. The next entry is at 4.04 p.m. and stretches through 4.17 p.m. What is that? Um, it's a series of messages, um, 404 to 417 is between um, the defendant and Detective uh, Jess Bethel, well, I guess former Detective uh, Jess Bethel. Um, she starts with, the defendant starts with, we have a question. Detective Bethel says, okay. Defendant says, want us to look rag or band-aids from our burns from the candle. It may also have DNA to go with the toothbrush. It may be in the trash downstairs. And she corrects herself and says, look for it says, did not want to gross you out. And Detective Bethel says, a brush or toothbrush should be sufficient for right now. But if it's readily available, bring it. No need if you have to search for it right now. And the defendant replies with, okay, no problem. What time do you leave? The next entry is at 425 p.m. Describe that. Uh, there was an outgoing call from the defendant to Mr. Stout for one minute and 41 seconds. The next is from 426 p.m. to 438 p.m. What is that? 
this is between uh, messages between Harley and the defendant. It starts with Harley saying, where did you go? The defendant says, I will text you in 10 minutes or so. Uh, Harley says, huh, where's Lena? NVM, which stands for never mind, she's here. The defendant says, she was on her bed, don't open for anyone. Harley says, okay, where are you going? And the defendant says, I said I would text you in 10 minutes. Harley sends a question mark. The defendant says, something isn't right. I think they are hiding something. Harley says, who, the police? And the defendant says, they asked for toothbrushes, yes. And Harley says, hmm, HMM, what do you think they're hiding, question mark? Um, as it relates to uh, the reference to the defendant that somebody's hiding something, who during this period of time was actually hiding something? The defendant was hiding Gannon. Uh, 4.40 p.m., what's that next entry? 4.40 p.m., Al uh, goes to the office of the sheriff um, and does his first interview, and that's where he brought Gannon's toothbrush and Gannon's comb. The next entry is at 4.41 p.m., what is that? So at this time, um, with the cast report above, we know that the defendant's not home. Harley doesn't know where the defendant is. Albert, I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Stout tries to call the defendant at 4.41 p.m., and it has a zero duration and a code. at and has a code CFNR, which means call forwarding not reachable, which is different than when you call a phone and it rings six times and then goes to voicemail. This means the phone wasn't on the network at that time, at 441, when Mr. Stout tried calling the defendant. The next entry is at 441 p.m., what is that? That's the Colorado Springs Airport parking slip recovered in the Rio, uh, showing uh, just a real quick trip uh, through the airport parking lot. Did the defendant return the Kia Rio at that particular time? Not at that time. The Tiguan is still in the uh, parking lot and uh, the defendant continues to drive out of the airport and northbound on Powers. Is this um, basically just a quick status check through the uh, parking lot of the airport? Yes. The next entry is at 4.42 p.m. What is that? Uh, Mr. Stout has a 24 second FaceTime with Harley. 4.42 p.m. to 4.51 p.m. Describe that. Uh, after this FaceTime, Harley messages the defendant saying, Albert said you need to go where he is at. It's been 10 minutes. The defendant says, huh? And Harley says, IDK for I don't know. He FT for FaceTime. So I don't know. He FaceTimed me and said you need to go there, question mark. Is that a reference to um, Mr. Stout trying to get the defendant to go to the sheriff's office where he was still in the midst of an interview? Correct. The next entry is at 4.51 p.m. What is that entry? So uh, the defendant makes an outbound call to Mr. Stout that lasted 52 seconds following this exchange with Harley. Describe it, 5, five o'clock p.m.? Harley messages the defendant with a question mark, and then the defendant replies back with, okay, I called them. What is that in reference to? Um, Harley's trying to figure out what's going on, where everyone's at, and the defendant's saying, okay, I, I called uh, them. Any indication as to who them is? It's, she's making reference to law enforcement which she'll do a couple other times, but it's she really called Al. She didn't call any law enforcement. Okay. The next entry is at 5.04 p.m. What is that? Uh, Harley has a 56-second FaceTime with the defendant. And just so we're clear, when, when there's a FaceTime call that actually connects between two phones like this, uh, is the actual content of that call ever captured? No. So it's just like a phone call? Unrecorded. Unrecorded. Okay. The next entry... Um, Above the line, referring to cast report page 35, brackets 5.18 p.m. through 5.57 p.m. What is the significance of that page of the cast report for this uh, portion of the timeline? For this period of the timeline, the defendant's uh, travels from where she was north on Powers back to the residence. At 5.18 p.m. to 5.23 p.m. Uh, below the line for the content, what is uh, significant for that portion, that entry? Uh, Mr. Stalk says, what did she say? And the defendant says, she wouldn't answer. Mr. Stalk says, okay. And the defendant says, I'm about to head that way. I need to finish trying to use the bathroom. Mr. Stalk says, okay, well, I'll see what they say. The defendant says, why are they holding you there? Mr. Stalk says, not holding me, just getting all of this recorded, I guess. The defendant says, have you started? And Mr. Stalk says, done, I think. And the defendant says, so you did a recording without me? And Mr. Stalk says, huh? And the defendant says, like they have you separate and you aren't talking to the lady and you are done yours. 
And Mr. Stalk says, when you get here, I will sit in with you. And the defendant says, you need to ask for attorneys. This doesn't make any sense. You should already be finished with your recording. They have lied and treated us like crap. Is this in reference to um, the defendant um, not being happy with Mr. Stout being sitting through an interview with the sheriff's office? Yes. At 5.22 p.m. to 5.28 p.m., what is that entry? The message between the defendant and Harley. The defendant says, I'm talking to him to go. Harley replies with, huh, question mark. The defendant says, Albert. Harley says, to go where? The defendant says, they said I have to go back to the place. They are treating us crappy. Who is there with you? Harley says, just me and Lena, question mark. The defendant says, who was at the ring earlier? Harley says, nobody was at the ring. And the defendant says, what did Albert say to you? Harley says, to tell you to come there. And the defendant says, I told him this is nonsense to come there again. Is this again referring to Mr. Stout being at the sheriff's office being interviewed? It is. The next entry is at 5.36 p.m. What is that? Uh, Harley attempts to FaceTime the defendant, but it doesn't connect. And then 5.37 p.m.? The defendant attempts to FaceTime Harley, but it doesn't connect. And then 5.37 p.m.? Um, Mr. Stout tries to call the defendant, but it doesn't connect. So he replies with a text message saying, hey, call, which the defendant does do. And they connected for 12 minutes and 28 seconds. At 5.38 uh, p.m., did Harley try to do a FaceTime call that did not connect? She did, and that's because uh, the defendant and Al were on a phone call. Okay. At 5.45 p.m., what is that? Uh, it's a message from Harley to the defendant saying someone is here with pizza. The defendant says, it's pizza. Harley uh, asks, do I open? And the defendant says, yes. Is that essentially uh, Harley Hunt asking for permission to open the door to accept a pizza delivery? Yes, she was instructed earlier not to open the door for anyone. 5.52 p.m., what is that entry? Um, the defendant makes a uh, FaceTime for 3 minutes and 34 seconds to Harley. And then the next entry above the line uh, references from 6 p.m. through 6.56 p.m. and points to cast report, so the FBI report, page 36. What is the significance of that page of the cast report for this bracketed period of time? So at the beginning bracket of this time, the defendant is uh, at the residence. And then at the end of the bracket of time, the defendant has made her way back to the airport in the Kia Rio. All right, so let's dig into this portion. 6 p.m., what is that entry? Um, the special victims unit of the sheriff's office called the defendant for 34 minutes and 57 seconds. Describe the entry for 6.12 to 6.15 p.m. So while the defendant is speaking with uh, the SVU, a series of messages happen between the defendant and Harley and the defendant and Al. So the first starts at 6.12 p.m. and the defendant says, what's going on there? And uh, Harley says, Albert came and left, well, is back now. And during this particular time, um, you've mentioned that the defendant is not at the house, the 6627 Mandan Drive. She's, she's hanging out down south and then she goes home and then goes to the airport. The people that are actually at the house during this particular portion of time um, are who? For the most part, it's just uh, Harley and Lena, and then Al pops in real quick and then leaves again. Okay. At 6.15 p.m. to 6.22 p.m., what is that entry? Uh, the defendant messages uh, Mr. Stalk saying, where are you? Mr. Stalk replies, home. And the defendant says, what question did they ask you? Question mark, question mark. Is she trying to gather information here as to what was asked? at the sheriff's office to Al by the um, deputies? She has. She's asked this a couple of times at this point because she doesn't know what's being discussed. 6.24 p.m., what is that entry? Um, it's a message from the defendant to Harley saying, what's Albert Dolman? And correct yourself by saying doing. They are asking me dumb questions. Harley responds with talking to the news because they're here. 6.25 p.m., what is that entry? Uh, Mr. Stalk says same ones uh, to the defendant, and then the defendant says same ones how. 6.31 p.m. to 6.34 p.m., what is that entry? The defendant messages Harley saying, is he still with the news? Harley says they're about to leave. The defendant says, anyone else there? Harley says they're leaving. The defendant uh, says, just you, Albert, and Lena. Harley says, just me and Lena, IDK, for I don't know, if they need people, are still packing stuff into the cars, but only me and Lena inside. The defendant responds with, packing what? Harley says, like the camera equipment. 
The defendant says, where is Albert, though? And Harley says, he left to go look again. 635, Kim, what is that entry? The defendant messages um, Albert after trying to call and uh, no answer. So the defendant messages uh, Mr. Stout saying, I need to talk to you. And why is Lena still with Harley? Hello, this is important. And Al's not responding. And then at 637 and 638 p.m., two more outbound calls from the defendant to uh, Mr. Stout, no answer. All right, and then 6.39 p.m. to 6.48 p.m.? Um, the defendant messages Mr. Stout with three more phone calls that went unanswered, and the defendant says, you are supposed to be my teammate, and we need to talk. And where are you? I don't know what's going on with you, but Harley is going to need to leave, and she said you came out and left. Albert, they were asked bad stuff about you. That's why O said a lawyer. Where are you? Did you do those things? What is that in reference to? It's she's alluding to Al that she's talking with someone that's um, asking bad stuff about you. She's not with law enforcement at this time. Um, she, she's trying to make it sound like she's meeting with people to, to, to try to find Gannon. Okay. And then the next entry at 6.56 p.m., what is that? It's an outgoing call from the defendant to Harley for three minutes and 38 seconds. And then the very last entry, um, what is that? So at this time, if you go up to the cast, she's been making her way up to the airport at this time. The Kia Rio uh, was not returned um, properly at the rental car return. It was found um, the next day in short-term parking. Um, and so uh, this is the point where uh, her phone is going up to the airport and she leaves the Rio in the short-term parking lot. Um, how does she leave the airport? In the Tiguan. So this is essentially when she goes up there to retrieve the Tiguan that contains Gannon's remains? Yes. Uh, is that the last entry on People's 697, page 304? It is. All right, moving on to page 404 of People's Exhibit 697. <laughs> Again, tell the jury what the sources of information are for this particular portion of the timeline. So we have messages um, from Al or from Mr. Stalk's phone download in Exhibit 32 between Mr. Stalk and the defendant. The defendant's phone download with messages between the defendant and Harley in Exhibit 205. And now we're going to see some messages between Mr. Stalk and Harley in Exhibit 206. And we still have the FBI cash report. And then the blue line for Gannon. Does this also extend for the entirety of this portion of the timeline? It does. Gannon is still missing. What is the time brackets for this portion of the timeline, page 404? So this is the final uh, page for Tuesday night. This is going to take us from 7 p.m. until midnight. All right. So starting above the timeline, we have a bracketed portion that goes from 7 p.m. until 7.26 p.m., referencing cast report, page 37. What is the significance of that portion of the cast report for this time bracket? So um, the defendant her phone in the Tiguan, leave the airport, exit the airport, go north on Powers, go northeast on 24 and stop. Um, there's a strip mall um, at Meridian and Woodman uh, where the uh, defendant loiters uh, for a little period of time. Okay, now going below the line, 7 p.m., what is that entry? Uh, it's another outgoing call from the defendant to Mr. Stout with a uh, no duration. 7.01 p.m. to 7.08 p.m., what is that? Um, this is a series of text messages the defendant sends to Mr. Stout. Starts with, why add, why add you ignoring me and going get Landon? I'm assuming it means, why are you ignoring me and going to get Landon? I've been home to meet you, like you said. I've called and called. I called the lady and told her you are now missing. Off the face of the earth, A-N-S, which I think is supposed to be and, was supposed to be going to get Landon, and you were supposed to take Lena, and Harley said you left, and then I went there, and you weren't there. And then what is uh, the, what's the next entry for that time slot? So um, it's the receipt. Uh, you know, you see when the entry time at the airport was this day at 8:30 a.m., and then you see the exit time when you go to the the, the booths, the tolls, and you you pay the $9 in this case, to have the little arm go up and leave the airport short-term parking uh, at 7.02 p.m. So we have multiple sources of data. We have the um, parking receipt 
which is Exhibit 325. We've got the defendant's phone with the Life 360 app on it with the cell phone towers, and we've got the Tiguan uh, telematics data, all corroborating uh, that there's movement from the airport uh, to the Falcon uh, northeast part of town. And that the defendant is, has left the airport at 7.02 p.m. in that Volkswagen Tiguan? Correct. The next entry is at 7.03 p.m. What is that? An outgoing call from the defendant to Detective Bethel for three minutes and 52 seconds. The next entry at 7.17 p.m. What is that? A message from the defendant to Mr. Stout saying, well, Harley was supposed to help me meet this team. I do know where you are and got worried. I'm sorry, I just wanted to be with you afterwards. And did Mr. Stout respond to that? No. The next entry is at 7.21 p.m. to 7.23 p.m. What is that? Um, so Harley and Lena are at the house uh, at Mandon, and Harley messages the defendant saying someone is here. The defendant says, who? Harley says, IDK, I don't know, people with badges. The defendant says, don't poke, and then correct saying open, so don't open. Harley says, okay, now they're knocking. They're leaving, I think. And then the defendant says, WTH, uh, who is that? The next entry is at 7.25 p.m. What is that? Um, this is a message from the defendant to Mr. Stout saying, I'm looking for you. Are you okay? Did Mr. Stout respond to that? No. The next entry is 7.26 p.m. to 7.34 p.m. Is that a text message string? Yes. Describe Between, that for uh, the jury. Harley and the defendant. Harley begins with IDK for I don't know. Their car is still here. Someone with a no caller ID called me. I didn't answer. They left a voicemail, and so Harley messages the defendant saying, it was a detective, left a voicemail. The defendant responds with, what did he say? Harley says, she just wanted to talk to me and to open the door. The defendant says, what? Why do they want to bombard you? Harley says, IDK, for I don't know. How did they get my number? Now they are looking in windows. They are at the door saying sheriff's office. The next entry is at 7.33 p.m. What is that? Um, Al's doing his second interview now uh, at the office of the sheriff. 7.37 p.m., what is that? The message from the defendant to Mr. Stout saying, well, I'm going back home, and Mr. Stout does not reply. Uh, was the uh, defendant, in fact, going back home at this particular time? No. The next entry is at 7.37, what is that? An outgoing call from the defendant to Harley that lasted uh, 10 minutes and 15 seconds. 7.45 p.m.? Um, something happened with the call where it got dropped or re-picked up because it's a continuation of the call for 2 minutes and 55 seconds. And then 7.48 p.m.? Um, something happened where the call must have dropped because then the Harley calls the defendant back and they have a connection for 6 minutes and 48 seconds. The next period of time that's bracketed in references to a cast report is from 7.59 p.m. to 9.28 p.m. What is the significance of that page 38 of the cast report to this bracketed period of time? This is when the defendant in the Tiguan with Gannon in the back goes to the S-curve up in Douglas County. So at that 7.59 p.m., what happens below the line there? So this is when the defendant has placed her phone into airplane mode because you see a whole lot of incoming activity where people are trying to get in touch with the defendant and it's, it's not going through. Meaning that people are trying to get a hold of the defendant and then it's just not being received on her end. Correct, Harley's trying to call at 7.59 p.m., 8.01 p.m., 8.04 p.m., 8.07 p.m., didn't go through. Mr. Stout's calling at 8.09 p.m., 8.10 p.m., 8.14 p.m., 8 p.m., didn't go through. And then continues again at 8.10, 8.11, 8.14. Uh, well, is that, that section is to Harley though. To right? Harley though, yes. Uh, saying, call me ASAP, but Harley's not answering Mr. Stout's calls. 816, Mr. Stout messages the defendant saying, call me. The defendant doesn't read this message until 9.54 p.m. Does that, um, when we looked at the, the phone activity uh, during the portion of the time when the defendant was up at that S-curve in Southern Douglas County, um, when it says red at 9.54 p.m. for that text message, does that corroborate with when the phone is then placed back into regular mode, out of airplane mode? Correct. So the, the defendant will connect to a, a Wi-Fi um, at that time uh, at the shops at Briargate and starts getting all of these missed call notifications and, and text messages. Okay. The next entry period is 8.24 p.m. to 8.29 p.m. What is that? 
These are messages between Mr. Stalk and Harley. Mr. Stalk begins with, I've been calling. Harley says, people are here. Mr. Stalk says, who? Question mark, question mark, question mark. Answer me, please. Who is there? Attempts to call Harley. Harley doesn't answer. Harley replies with detectives. Mr. Stalk says, where's Lena? Is Landon there? Harley says, here and no. And Mr. Stalk says, okay. And where is Mr. Stalk at that particular period of time? He's, he's still with the uh, office of the sheriff. Okay. The next period of time or entry, I should say, is 9.15 p.m. What is that? This is an outgoing call from Landon to the defendant. But again, the defendant doesn't have any cellular connectivity right now, so there's no answer. 9.22 p.m. What is that? Um, Al texts Harley. Or I'm sorry, Mr. Stalk texts Harley saying Harley, and Harley doesn't answer. The next period of time that is bracketed in referencing a CATS report starts at 9.49 p.m. and stretches to 11.30, p, 11 .30 p.m. in references to CATS report page 39. What is that page of the CATS report? Uh, why is it important for this period of time? This is when um, the defendant, uh, we know through the Tiguan data, um, has left the S-curve and has made her way back down to uh, the shops at Briargate located at Briar Gate and I-25, and the phone loiters in that area connected to a Wi-Fi at the Starbucks. Okay, let's get into this particular portion now. So at 9.51 p.m., what is that entry? Uh, the phone briefly connects to the, to the Hilton, which is across the street from Starbucks, located at 1810 Briar Gate. Uh, just briefly connects, but then the car goes across the street to where there's a Starbucks, uh, one of the first businesses as you enter the shops at Briar Gate. Uh, located at 1605 Briargate Parkway. And that's where the defendant phone connects and stays connected, um, I think for the next 45 to an hour, uh, where again, there's, there's a series of calls and messages made. 9.55 p.m., what is that entry? It's a six minute and 33 second FaceTime from the defendant to Harley. When a phone is in potentially an airplane mode, but is connected to a Wi-Fi, will, will a FaceTime call like this work? Yes. So you're not on the AT&T network anymore because they're AT&T customers. You can put in airplane mode and you're off cellular. So you won't have a data connection. You won't be able to make calls or text messages over the AT&T network. But since you have connectivity through the public Wi-Fi at the Starbucks, you can make calls and, and send messages and, and surf the internet. What's the entry at 10.02 PM? Um, the defendant uh, uses her phone to search colorado.gov CBI Amber Alert and looks at current active Colorado Amber Alerts. 10.03 p.m. to 10.04 p.m., what is that? Uh, it's the messages between Harley and the defendant. Um, Harley begins with, as soon as I opened the garage, they stopped me. They were hiding out. The defendant says, wow. Harley says, yeah, but I think I'm allowed to leave. The defendant says, why wouldn't you be allowed to leave? Harley says, IDK for I don't know. The defendant says, I want my dogs and you. And then Harley says, at first they wouldn't until Lena got here. And then the defendant says, until Lena, question mark. And then Harley says, until people took Lena. The defendant says, who took Lena? Harley says, detectives. The defendant says, why did they take her? Harley says, IDK for I don't know. The defendant says, is she back? Harley says, I told them I'm not going anywhere or saying anything, no. Did the detectives take Lena for a uh, forensic interview? They did. How old was Lena at that time? She was eight. Okay. 10.04 p.m. to 10.08 p.m., what is that entry? It's, it's a continuation of that previous conversation between the defendant and Harley. Uh, the defendant says, just keep saying that. Tell me what the guy says at the door. Harley says, okay. The defendant says, has any other family asked where I was, like our family? And Harley says, Grandma, she asked if you were okay. The defendant says, does she know they set me up? Harley says, no. The defendant says, is it on the news? They are wanting to talk to me. Have to get an attorney fast. You there? Harley says, IDK for I don't know. The defendant says, what's the guy saying? Harley says, nothing, just taking pictures. The defendant says, of what? Harley says, the entire house. The defendant says, what's Landon been doing? Harley says, she's not here. The defendant says, trying to get back with Albert. What is that a reference to? Uh, she's insecure in the relationship, and she thinks that uh, Albert and Landon are going to hook up while she's in town. The, and, and this is during the period of time when Gannon is missing? 
Yeah, and it's still missing. Uh, 10, 11 p.m. to 10, 12 p.m., what is that entry? A continuation of the previous conversation between the defendant and Harley. It starts with the defendant saying, who is there? Harley says, just me. The defendant says, I've been set up. So just you and Albert? Harley says, no, just me. The defendant says, where did Albert go? Harley says, and dogs. He hasn't been here. The defendant says, why is there a detective there with you, an underage minor? Harley says, IDK for I don't know, but I'm asking if I can leave. Defendant says, tell them you are uncomfortable with these men. Harley says, okay. And defendant says, if you need to call 911 and tell them they are making you stay there. Where was Al still during this period of time? He's still at the uh, office of the sheriff. 10, 16 p.m. is the next entry. What is that? The message from the defendant to Al, and it says, why? Tell them one of their own, well, tell them one of their own met me and told me what was going on and how you turned on me. I can't believe you. I'm not stupid. They said for you to say that. It will come out I'm being set up. I knew you were lying the whole time this afternoon. It has already been leaked to me. Make me thankful, makes me thankful there are crooked people in the blues who is working just as hard pushing back secretively. Um, did Albert respond, Mr. Stauk respond to that? No. Is there any context uh, to that particular text? She's alluding that she's got an in uh, within the police department who's giving her privileged information about uh, details on the case. Did she in fact have uh, an inside informant um, with the investigation that was giving her um, that kind of information? No, she did not. 10.17 p.m. to 10.20 p.m. is the next entry, what is that? Two messages sent to Harley from the defendant saying, hello, I don't like you there. Harley, I don't like you there by yourself. Harley didn't read that message until the next day at 1.36 a.m. The next entry is at 10.23 p.m. What is that? Harley has a 16 minute and 15 second FaceTime with the defendant. And then at 10.24 p.m. Al's still doing more interviews with uh, the Apasa County Sheriff. And during that time, all the way up to that 10.24 p.m., where is the defendant? He's still at the shops at Briargate, connected to the uh, Starbucks Wi-Fi. Is that after returning from the S-curve in Southern Douglas County? Yeah, immediately. She, she went directly from the S-curve in Douglas County to the shops at Briargate. The next entry is at 10.45 p.m. What is that? It's a message from the defendant to uh, Detective Bethel. And it reads, what do you want from me? Because I have nothing. One of your very own leaked to me what you guys were doing. I did nothing and or am being set up. I'm not really even sure other than that being told that by another blue with El Paso. I was told I couldn't go home to sleep, and on top of that, men were sent to a home with a minor female, and she was forced to stay there, not to even leave for food. Every conversation that's said, even at this moment, I can hear inside. What do you want from me? And Detective Bethel responds at 11.39 p.m. saying, come in to talk to me. I would just like information to find Gannon. Up to this particular text message, have the defendant actually gone to the sheriff's office yet for a formal interview? No. Um, in this text message and in ones that we've seen prior to this, there's references to I and me and that sort of thing. Um, is that consistent throughout these text messages coming from the defendant's phone? Yes. The next entry has uh, four time slots on it. Tell us about that. 1052, 1102, 1110, and 1124. Harley is trying to call the defendant, but they go unanswered. And then this is the return um, of the cast report where it's bracketed to 11.30 p.m., is that correct? That's correct. And the reason why these calls went unanswered is because the defendant is now moving and is off the, the Wi-Fi. So it has now disconnected from the Starbucks Wi-Fi? Correct. So there's no connectivity to the phone at all, not on AT&T or on a Wi-Fi because the defendant's traveling. Does that indicate that the phone is still in airplane mode then? Yes. Okay. 11.26 p.m. to 11.31 p.m., what is that entry? Um, Harley is trying to FaceTime the defendant two times, and they did not connect. 11.42 p.m. to 11.50 p.m., what is that? Um, the defendant has uh, logged on to a uh, Wi-Fi and has sent the message to uh, Detective Bethel saying, my life is being ruined. Am I able to go to my home? I have nowhere to sleep. You said you asked me questions already. I tried to call. So she's now connected um, to uh, the Holiday Inn 
uh, located at 3431 Cinema Point, which shares a parking lot with Massage Envy where Harley works. Harley's en route to pick up uh, the defendant um, and Harley uh, testified that she was under the impression that they were gonna stay at this hotel tonight. Um, but the defendant in fact just got into Harley's Jetta and they went back to the Mandan house that night. So um, if we're understanding you correctly, did they then leave the Tiguan at that, basically in that parking lot for the Holiday Inn? Yes, they, leave, they left the Tiguan um, at the parking lot of the Holiday Inn and uh, Gannon was no longer in the back at this time. Uh, 11.51 p.m., what is that? Uh, the defendant makes a three-minute FaceTime with Detective Bethel at 11.51 p.m. Is that the last entry for page 404 of People's Exhibit 697? Yes, this closes out Tuesday, January 28th. Moving on to People's Exhibit 698, page one of two. All right, so we have moved on to People's Exhibit 698, page one of two, and let me zoom in on this and have you do the same thing that we've done with the rest of the exhibits, plus the source of information for uh, this timeline. Uh, Mr. Stalk's phone download, the defendant's uh, phone download, and Harley's phone download, and the FBI cast report. For the period of time that is referenced on People's Exhibit uh, 698, page one of two, uh, does the blue line indicating Gannon is missing extend for the entirety of this portion of the timeline? It does, Gannon is still missing. Starting at the beginning of this timeline, tell the jury what date and time we're focusing on for page one of two of People's 698. So the phone is still connected to the Wi-Fi at the uh, Holiday Inn. We hit midnight, so now it's January 29th, Wednesday. And this um, timeline is gonna cover the periods of midnight to 11 a.m. on Wednesday morning. Okay. The next entry is at midnight through 12.22 a.m. Tell us what we're seeing there. So messages between the defendant and Mr. Stout. And it starts with the defendant uh, right at midnight saying, are you able to talk now? Harley would like to get all her things because she has to work and start school and she has nowhere to go and she was left there with men. I tried to talk to you forever tonight and you ignored me. You have all this wrong. You told some dude what I was driving or what? 
I have talked to everyone. You left her with Lena there and then wouldn't even tell her anything. Wouldn't talk to me. I thought something was wrong. Now you bring your ex to our home and refuse to talk to me. This is all wrong and you have this wrong. I have paid for my share of things at my home. This is stupid. Mr. Stout responds with- So let me break in there and just ask you some, let's unpack that text message because it's a little bit long. Um, there was a text message earlier in um, one of the exhibits of this timeline where there was a reference by the defendant to Landon coming into town. Um, do you remember that? I do. Was it a surprise to anybody that Landon was coming into town after Gannon was reported missing? No. In the period of time that uh, she's referencing here, in your mind, is this what she's referring to when Al is still at the sheriff's office being interviewed? It is, yes. Mr. Stouck, I should say. It is. All right, pick up from there with Mr. Stouck's response. Uh, Mr. Stouck responds with, I'm not refusing anything. This was the plan. There is so much you are withholding from me, and I see that now. PLZ, which is short for please, do not come back here tonight or at all until you are ready to talk. And the defendant replies with, it is my home and I am. You can't kick us out. I have nowhere to go. Harley has nowhere to go. The utilities are in my name. Mr. Stalk replies with, do not come here and cause problems. Where are y'all then? Where is Gannon? The defendant says, I'm not coming there to cause problems. I own over half the stuff there. Mr. Stalk says, take it. The defendant says, so you don't want to be my husband? Why? Why are you doing this? I will talk to you and only you. Call me first. Hello? Albert, it's cold. It's not what you think. I don't know where he is. I am your spouse, and you have your ex-wife in our home. Your. It's was not the plan. I said I would talk to you. Mr. Stalk responds with, no, my missing child's mother is here. Come talk then. The defendant says, I have every right to be that whole and crush yourself to home. Mr. Stalk says, but it, it better start with the truth or I'm calling the detectives. The defendant then says, what are you talk about? Truth about what? You can't call detectives on me for speaking or not. I have did nothing wrong. Talking, call me. Mr. Stalk replies with, I'm home. That's all I'm worried about right now. And my boy, mom is on the way. The defendant replies with, I have sympathy, but you are turning on me. And the other guy who told me what they said to you, I want to sleep in my bed with my dog and Harley wants to sleep in her bed. It's my home. There is no law that prevents me from sleeping in my home. Al, or Mr. Stalk says, yep. And then the defendant says, so can we sleep in our home? We are outside with our dogs with nothing. And this is Rudolph's, Rudolph's ridiculous. That Rudolph's, Rudolph's ridiculous, uh, based on your understanding of phones, um, what do you indicate that to be? It's, it's the autocorrect. Uh, she meant to say this is ridiculous, but it inserted Rudolph's twice. The next entry is at 12.50 a.m. to 12.52 a.m. What is that? Uh, it's a continuation. Um, the defendant says, hello. And Mr. Stalk says, where? And the defendant says, where is everyone going to be? I want to sleep in our bed. Question mark, question mark, hello. Mr. Stalk says, I don't care. The defendant says, our dogs need to go out. You said to talk to you, and I asked, where is everyone going to be? I need to sleep. Mr. Stalk says, Landon is with Lena. Brandon is on the couch. Harley has her suite, and you get the bed. And then the defendant says, and your mom? And Mr. Stalk says, her and Becky are in G's room. I need the truth. And then the defendant says, what time are they getting there? Is anyone going to say anything to me? Mr. Stalk says, nope, I need the truth. The next entry is at 12.53 a.m. What is that? Uh, the defendant attempts to call Mr. Stalk, but it doesn't connect. The next entry from 12.53 a.m. to 12.56 a.m. What is that? So within the same minute after not connecting, the defendant sends a message to Mr. Stalk saying, so what exactly are you doing if I come in and go to bed and don't bother you? Mr. Stalk says, I'll be on the couch. The defendant says, okay, and everything is all good and no one, not one is bothering anyone. Mr. Stalk says, you need to tell me the truth. The defendant says, see how you don't accept the truth so I can sleep? Mr. Stalk says, sleep all you want. I need the truth. The defendant says, where is everyone going to be while we are walking in? Mr. Stalk says, in bed, stop dodging. I need the truth. The defendant says, I'm asking you, is everyone in bed so we can come? Mr. Stalk says, yes, except for mom. She isn't here yet. 
Yes, except mom isn't here yet. Truth, question mark. The defendant says, what time is she getting there? Mr. Salk says 20. The defendant says, okay, so how long before they will be in bed too? Mr. Salk says, whatever. The next entry is at 104 a.m. What is that? Uh, the defense phone connects to the uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken located at 2835 New Center Point, which is slightly south of uh, the Massage MD and, and the Hilton or the Holiday Inn. In that um, Holiday Inn, the Massage MD and this KFC, is that basically on the Powers Corridor? Uh, it is. It's, it's between Constitution and, and South Carefree along the Powers Corridor. Okay. 104 a.m. to 112 a.m. What is that? Messages between the defendant and Mr. Stout begins with the defendant saying, we will be there. Please don't let anyone bother our dogs. Will you let me know when she is there? We can wait close by, question mark, question mark. Albert, I have to work. I'm not getting paid out, question mark, question mark. And Mr. Uh, Stout doesn't respond. The next entry is at 1.15 a.m. What is that? Uh, it's a message uh, from the defendant to Dietra Moss. And the message reads, I came back home because they said they were doing that to see. But it's still sketchy. I can be here. I have to leave soon. I can't take being a punching bag anymore. I should have left last week when I said it. The next entry is at 1.17 a.m. to 1.18 a.m. What is that? Um, it's text messages between the defendant and Mr. Stout. It starts with the defendant saying, I'm trying to talk to you. I asked one simple request to let me know where everyone is in bed because it's cold and the dogs need to go out. And Mr. Stout doesn't respond. The next entry at 1.23 a.m. has a reference to cast report page 40 above the line. What is the significance of that? Um, so the defendant is using the tower that provides coverage to the house indicating that the phone is at or near the residence. Does that bracket of time um, start at 1.23 a.m.? It does. And when does it end? 8.25 a.m. Okay. Going to that 1.23 a.m. below the line um, entry, what do we have there? The defendant messages Al saying, or Mr. Stout saying, we are outside if you want to talk. And then two phone calls were placed from the defendant to Mr. Stout at 1.23 a.m., 1.25 a.m., and they did not connect. There's no answer. What's the next entry at 1.36 a.m. to 1.40 a.m.? Um, so the defendant and Harley are now inside the residence. And the defendant is messaging Harley saying, is Chance okay? Harley says, yes. The defendant says, they tore up my clothes and went crazy in here, threw stuff everywhere. Harley says, wow. The defendant says, your stuff, question mark? Harley says, it's fine. And then the defendant says, and what did the downstairs look like? And Harley says, IDK for, I don't know, it's dark. Um, based on your knowledge of the case, um, did anybody go into uh, the defendant's clothes and tear them up and throw them everywhere? They didn't tear them up and throw them everywhere. They, they photographed uh, the, the scene. Okay. Uh, 142 a.m., what is that entry? A uh, message from the defendant to Mr. Stout saying, you felt the need to destroy my closet. Did Mr. Stout respond to that? No. 146 a.m., what is that? Messages between Harley and the defendant. Uh, Harley starts by saying, should I lock my door? The defendant says, yes. Harley says, okay. Is, is that fairly consistent um, throughout all of your review of these text messages? Uh, where Harley Hunt, the defendant's daughter, will ask permission before she does a specific thing, like open the door for the detectives or get pizza or locking her door. Yes. 1.50 a.m., what is that entry? A message between the defendant and Mr. Stout uh, with a voicemail that was forwarded from the defendant's phone to Mr. Stout's phone. And uh, the text message says, so this was on purpose? that I have a few voicemails with her talking crap about you working all the time and the kids not getting love. And was, was the voicemail itself um, relevant to the investigation? No. Who was the voicemail from? Um, so earlier in the night when um, uh, the defendant put her phone in airplane mode and was traveling to the S-curve, uh, Landon attempted to call the defendant um, and the phone didn't hang up in a, in a open mic, essentially. Uh, there, there was a, a, a voicemail left where they were talking uh, about some things. They being who? Uh, Landon, uh, Mr. Stout, and uh, EPSO deputies. At 1.51 a.m. to 1.54 a.m. is the next entry. What is that? The messages between Harley and the defendant. Harley starts with saying, you and Sadie can come sleep down here if you, I'm sorry, 
you and Sadie can come sleep down here with me if you want. So let me break in there just so that the court reporter, um, for her benefit, uh, Sadie, spell that name first of all. Uh, S-A-D-I-E. And who is Sadie? Sadie's their second dog. Okay. So pick up from there. Um, the defendant responds with, I honestly don't want to walk around them. Sadie has to go out so bad. She is at the door begging. And does that basically just continue with um, discussions between the defendant and Harley about uh, what they're doing in their separate rooms in the house? Yes. Anything more of relevance there? No. Uh, 2.08 a.m. to 2.54 a.m., what is that? This is a message uh, from the defendant to uh, Detective Bethel. At 2.08 a.m., it's a series of messages for essentially the next 40-ish minutes, uh, ending at 2.54 a.m., and starts out with, can we talk soon? I appreciate all your hard work. I have information. Gannon was upset about the candle. I didn't know that he had cut himself with it because he had on a blue undershirt and the long sleeves and he had a small burn area. I did too. When we came back inside from the smoke, there was blood on both of us. I didn't know what to do. I was scared I would get fussed out about it and I didn't know if he should go to the doctor. I kept trying to add the candle thing, but Albert kept saying it was small and minor. I was scared the basement was smoky, and when I threw the covers on everything, we both had blood. You don't understand how hard it is to be a stepmom. I get judged for everything, and he was scared for being ground. So then the next day, this is where I need to talk to you. Okay, so <clears throat> let's unpack that first of all. Um, the candle that was referenced in this, and it, as it relates to the burn, um, was that candle actually recovered from the trash can on the outside of the house? It was. Was any glass broken? Um, no. Uh, in your mind, did it make sense that there would be a reference to Gannon being cut by a candle with no broken glass? It does not. And is this the first um, reference that we have to uh, there being blood involved in whatever happened to Gannon? It, it is. Okay, pick up from there with uh, what is responded to that long text from Detective Bethel. So uh, Detective Bethel replies with, okay, can you come in to talk? And the defendant says, yes, I'm sorry I wasn't ever hiding anything from you. You don't understand the pressure I get put under about not doing enough. Could you trust in me and let me meet you in the morning? I am so tired, I still haven't slept yet, question mark. And Detective Bethel says, we can talk in the morning. Is there anything I should know since we are still looking tonight? And the defendant says, I did not hurt Gannon. I did not put him in harm's way. And this is the first time also, you know, with blood that they were mentioning that Gannon might be hurt. And so Detective Bethel asks, is he hurt? And the defendant says, I don't think he is because I keep faith, keeping. But I really need your help to make sure everyone knows I would never hurt him and did not in <clears throat> any way. So and let me let me break in and, and unpack that a little bit. The first reference to um, Gannon potentially being hurt is introduced by who? The defendant. And during this whole recitation of text messages, um, does the defendant continue to refer to herself as I? Numerous times. I, 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 just n numerous times. Okay. Uh, to that last um, text message that you just read about um, the defendant saying and did not in any way, uh, read from there with the Detective Bethel conversation. Detective Bethel responds with, what time can you come in today after mm -hmm. you sleep? The defendant responds with, I don't want you upset with me for all your hard work and everyone else's. And I ask that you please protect our house and us from anyone that may be dangerous to for me giving extra info and correct yourself by saying to us. And as soon as I wake and then Detective Bethel says, what information do you have? I can't protect anyone from anything if I don't know what it is. Come in at 10 a.m. at the OTS 27 East Fermajo Avenue. The defendant replies with, okay, I will be there. Can you please not get me for not giving all the details that I knew to you at first? I know people do it a lot and it gets frustrating for you, but I'm a victim as well and didn't want to be forced to take a test at some doctor's office. And Detective Bethel says, we can talk more about that when you come in. The defendant says, do you have to release person info and correct yourself saying personal, as in, do you have to release personal info? to the media and online, like as in with me. Say, for example, a friend of mine 
had an abusive spouse, so she had to cover up everything, asking for a friend. Then Deputy Bethel, or Detective Bethel says, I don't release information. And then the, the defendant says, as in she is working, but is off having quiet time. Okay, thank you. My husband wouldn't ever look at me the same knowing what happened to me, and I couldn't tell you in front of him, and I know he would act in a violent manner. Thank you, see you tomorrow, I mean today. Detective Bethel says, okay, see you soon. We will talk later today, please get some sleep. And the defendant says, and so I don't forget, let me add this on here so I can remember to tell you, Janet and I were working together because Albert always works. So I will explain things that you may have had concerns about, but we were and had a plan because even though she wasn't the best, it was more than what Albert did because he was working or sleeping and didn't spend any time with them, KK. That was a long text screen. Do you need to uh, wet your whistle at all? Uh, yes, please. Yeah, yeah. The, the next entry is at 2.56 a.m. What is that entry? Oh, it's 2.56 in the morning. And the defendant sends this message to a 360 number uh, with a picture of a SkyWest, uh, like in the beginning stages of an application uh, with SkyWest. And uh, along with the picture, uh, the defendant said, I never sent you what I had received. Does that have any relation to the investigation? Um, no. Does it coincide with um, what we're going to get to later about um, her making plans to move out of the state? It does in that aspect. Okay. 3.20 a.m., what is that information? A message was drafted at 3.20 a.m., but never sent uh, to, to the defendant's mom, Deborah Locklear. And it reads, no, just upset because they keep freaking out on me and everyone in his family acts like I know where he is and won't tell. And then no response from the defendant's mom. And you said that was unsent? It was unsent. Yep, so that makes sense. There's no response. Okay. Sorry. That's okay. 7.04 a.m. is the next entry. What is that? So uh, several hours have passed now, and so it's 7.04 a.m., and the defendant receives a message from a 910 area code number saying, Hey, Tisha, how are y'all doing? And the defendant responds, Oh, sorry, I'm at home. I'm doing okay. As it relates to the person that sent that text message, um, do you know who that person is? Uh, we do, but I, I don't remember at is, time. Okay. Is the identity of that person relevant to the investigation? It's not. Okay. 7.19 a.m. to 7.24 a.m., what is that? Messages between the defendant and Mr. Stout, starting with the defendant saying, my chargers are in your car. Can I please have them? Mr. Stout says, sure. The defendant says, could you get it? I don't have any battery, and Sadie needs to go out really bad. Mr. Stout says, no. The defendant says, please, I'm not trying to cause any trouble. Mr. Stout says, I need the truth. The defendant says, I already did what you asked. You are the one who would not wake up. Mr. Stout says, wake up. I haven't slept in days, and that's manipulative to say you told me when I was sleeping. The defendant then says, I, was, I wasn't knocking you about sleeping, I'm sorry. I was saying I did what you asked and you were tired. Mr. Stalk says, what I asked? I asked you to tell me the truth. The defendant then says, Albert, I'm not getting yelled at by a bunch of people. I told you I would speak to you in person. I went in there and said, hey, are you ready now last night? And you told me no. Mr. Stalk replies, I was asleep. Let me know, let me in now and tell me. And uh, the defendant says the door is unlocked. So the, the beginning portion of this text string, um, when it's talking about uh, my chargers, what is, what's the reference there? Her cell phone uh, charger. Uh, in your mind, does this indicate that she's got um, a good understanding of place and time uh, and circumstance, meaning that she knows that her phone is um, potentially depleting in battery? Yes. 7.50 a.m. to 7.59 a.m., what is that? message from the defendant to um, Mr. Stalk's phone saying, can you please come here? Can you please take Sadie out? Can you tell Landon to come here? Can you please take Sadie out? Please, I'm ashamed. Did, did Mr. Stalk respond to that? No. The next entry is at 8.15 a.m. What is that? So about 16 minutes after this message, Mr. Stalk calls the sheriff's office and reports that the defendant is at the house and someone raped and kidnapped, uh, raped her and kidnapped Gannon. Is this the first um, reference very explicitly that there was a report of a rape by the defendant? It is. She alluded to it at like two in the morning with Deputy or Detective Bethel, but didn't say rape. Um, she mentioned that, you know, she couldn't tell because her husband wouldn't look at her the same, but this is where she 
first time we see the rape story come out. Okay. The next entry is 8.25 a.m. What is that? It's a message from the defendant to Harley saying, please come get Sadie. My phone is about to die. Did, did uh, Harley Hunt respond to that text? She did not. The next entry is at 8.35 a.m. What is that? So the sheriff's office arrives to the residence and the defendant is in the basement. What's significant about that? Um, that, that she is, um, it, it corroborates uh, what Mr. Stout said, saying the defendant is here, um, and then the uh, sheriff's office arrives and, and the defendant's in the basement. Okay. 9.50 a.m., what is that entry? Um, so at 9.50 a.m., uh, Harley and the defendant get in Harley's Jetta, and Harley has to work, but they make a stop real quick uh, to the airport to where instead of going in and returning the keys or, or at the, uh, the, the counter, the rental counter, um, the defendant hands the keys um, to a worker on the sidewalk, and then they drive away in the Jetta. And was that information testified to by Detective Rob Soroy, former Detective Rob Soroy, that he was at the airport basically when this whole thing goes down? When that happened, yes. Uh, the next entry is at 10.21 a.m. What is that? Uh, Harley clocks into work at Massage Envy. 10.25 a.m. What is that entry? These are messages between the defendant and uh, Detective Bethel. Uh, the defendant says, I'm on the way. Detective Bethel says, okay. The defendant says, here shortly. Sorry, had to handle some things because my family is getting harassed and threatened and my daughter's safety is now in danger. She is getting threatened online and my family. And Detective Bethel says, okay, we need to talk about that. Where is she now? Are you okay? Just checking to see. So uh, let me unpack that just a little bit with some questions um, first. Was there ever any indication that the family meaning the defendant's family, as indicated in that text message, was being threatened or harassed by people? I didn't see any specific threats. Um, I did see um, some people on social media say, just tell them you know, where he is, but um, I didn't see any, any threats okay. that, that would cause an imminent concern. And this text string started at 10.25 a.m. Roughly what time does the defendant actually show up at the sheriff's office? It's about noon. Okay. The next entry is at 10.57 a.m. What is that? Uh, the defendant's phone connects to First and Main, which is at uh, the Massage Envy where um, uh, Harley works. All right. And that's the, is that the last entry on this page, one of two of People's Exhibit 698? Yeah, this, this takes us pretty much halfway through Wednesday. Okay. Getting into People's Exhibit 698, page two of two. Again, what are the sources of information for this portion of the timeline? Um, the sources are uh, Mr. Stalk's phone download, the defendant's download, and Harley's download. But uh, Mr. Stalk's not communicating over text anymore with the defendant. Um, and then we have the FBI cast report. Okay. And then same as before, is the Gannon is missing line extending for the duration of this portion of the timeline? Yes, Gannon is still missing. What is the date and time relevance for this portion of the timeline, page two of two of People's 698? So it's uh, still Wednesday, uh, January 29th, and we're looking from 11 a.m. until midnight. All right, for reference purposes, um, from 11 a.m. to 11.51 a.m., uh, you've got a line going above the line pointing to cast report, page 41, which is the FBI report. Why is that portion of the cast report relevant for that time frame? So... We still have um, Tiguan telematics data, and we still have the defendant's cell phone called detail record data with the tower and sector, and we still have the uh, GPS off the Life 360 app on the defendant's phone. And we see all, you know, both uh, the vehicle and the phone leave the Massage Envy area and travel to the office of the uh, sheriff, the El Paso County Sheriff's Office. Does this corroborate essentially the arrival time of the defendant um, at the sheriff's office on January 29th? It does. Starting at the 11 a.m. to 11.02 a.m., what is that information on the timeline? This picks back up with the defendant messaging Detective Bethel saying, resend the address, please. Uh, I found it. Detective Bethel responds with, okay, how long until you're here? Defendant says, says 10.8 miles. Detective Bethel says, okay, great. 11.03 a.m., what is that entry? Um, after that text exchange, uh, the defendant calls her sister, Amy Lowry, A-I-M-E-E-L-O-W-R-Y, uh, for 19 minutes and 36 seconds. 
Eleven twenty six a.m. What is that entry? Detective Bethel reaches out to the defendant, asking, "Where are you? Would you like a coffee or soda?" And the defendant doesn't respond for about ten minutes. The next entry at eleven thirty six a.m. to eleven forty a.m. What is that? In response to the coffee or soda, the re the defendant says, "Died, diet, parking. Thank you." What's the continuation of that conversation between Detective Bethel and the defendant? Detective Bethel says, okay, where are you parked? Do we need to make sure a meter gets fed or do I need to validate parking? The defendant says, I'm not sure that's what I'm trying to figure out where to go. And then Detective Bethel says, you can park in the garage behind the building and I will validate for you. By um, indications of the investigation, did the defendant in fact park in the garage at the sheriff's office? Yes, she did. The next entry at 11.57 a.m. to 11.58 a.m., what is that entry? The defendant asks Detective Bethel, what's the name again? Detective Bethel responds, Office of the Sheriff. The defendant says, I'm here. They said you would be out shoring and correct yourself and says shortly. And then we heard testimony from um, other detectives about the vehicle showing up and it appeared to have been washed and was still wet. Um, does that corroborate with this information, the defendant showing up and the vehicle was wet? that time it was and that's when uh, we seized the vehicle the next entry is at 12 p.m. what is that um, the defendant does the interview with uh, the Paso County Sheriff's Office uh, under exhibit 337 and that's when we seize the defendant's phone okay and then so does that essentially then as the investigation progresses from that point forward uh, do we get any Tiguan uh, telematics data after that point no, we seized it and we're searching it and we're taking it apart to get the telematics data. And then as it relates to her phone call detail records and that sort of thing, any data from the phone going from uh, the end of that interview at roughly 4 p.m. on the 29th forward until she's arrested, uh, do we have any data for that particular phone? No, we seized the phone to download it. And so there's no more call detail records with this phone number. There's no more Life360 GPS uh, hits with this phone. Um, and so now the defendant is without a car and a phone. Okay. The next entry is at 2.18 p.m. What is that? Uh, Harley messages the defendant saying, uncle wants you to call him. And this is getting towards the, you know, halfway point of the interview and the defendant messages back, okay, love you. And so does this text message actually come in to the defendant while she's in the interview room? It does. And this is the last message the defendant sends using this phone. Okay. The next entry is at 4.20 p.m. What is that? Um, we played the, the interview, um, and so towards the end, uh, the defendant started complaining of uh, shortness of breath and, and chest pains um, on top of a uh, rape story. And so the defendant is transported from the sheriff's office to uh, Memorial Hospital. The next entry is at 5.30 p.m. What is that? Harley clocks out of work. The next entry is from at 7.52 a.m. You have a squiggly line in front of the 7. What does that squiggly line mean, first of all? So that's approximately. Uh, so it's going to be around 7.52 p.m. The defendant um, left Memorial Hospital. Uh, why do we have an approximate time there as opposed to before when we've had very specific times? We don't have um, uh, the phone anymore with the Life360 GPS or the towers or anything like that. Um, so it's just uh, based on um, witnesses uh, and, and their account. Does, does this coincide with the testimony that we had from forensic nurse examiner Amanda Van Nest about the defendant leaving from the hospital before completing the examination? This part, yes, when the defendant left the hospital. Uh, the next entry is at 8.31 p.m. What is that? Um, 8.31, um, we heard testimony through um, uh, Janine Sanchez that she went with Harley and picked up the defendant um, at the Taco Bell um, and then they went um, and stayed the night at uh, Ms. Sanchez's residence. Uh, that Taco Bell, uh, what's the address of that, first of all? The Taco Bell is 390 North Union. Is that in fairly close proximity to the hospital, Memorial Hospital? It's very close. It's, it's within walking distance. And then the next timed entry that we have is at 848 p.m. What is that? Uh, 848. So the defendant's phone is no longer in play. Um, so now we have Harley's phone. And... Based on some statements from Ms. Sanchez, we don't know who's sending this message, uh, but it's coming from Harley's phone to the defendant's sister, Amy Lowry, and it says, we have to take location off and get another number. We will call you back. The next entry at 9.16 a.m. to 9, I'm sorry, 9.16 p.m. to 9.19 p.m., what is that entry? 
These are messages between Harley's phone and Mr. Stout's phone. And why are the uh, symbols here for these portions of coming from Harley's phone different than they've been before where you can actually see Harley's picture inside of them? Um, we're not confident at all that this is Harley sending these messages. We believe it's the defendant. Is that based in part off of the information that Janine Sanchez gave us when she testified very early on in this trial? That and Harley's uh, statements. Okay. So the 9.16 p.m. to 9.19 p.m., uh, tell us about that entry. Harley's phone messages Mr. Stout saying, I need to be able to get all my belongings tomorrow with my grandma so that I have a place to live with my family, please. Mr. Stout says, call me. Uh, then the reply is, no, I don't want to. I do not want to live there. I just need to know that I can do that privately with my grandma present. Mr. Stout says, okay, whatever you need, I will support you. You taking Chance and Sadie, those are the two dogs, and the response is, will that be okay to load up all of my things alone? And Mr. Stalk replies with, Harley, I will be there to help you. Obviously, I want you to stay, and you know that, but I understand your feelings. And the response is, I need their supplies too. They were left with no way to go out, and I feel I will give them a better care. Mr. Stalk says, not true. The deputies took them out and fed them. I made sure if that and went home once to check. I think he meant I made sure of that and went home once to check. The next entry is at 9.19 p.m. to 9.24 p.m. What is that? This is just a continuation. Um, the response to Mr. Stalk was, they need love, not just going out. Mr. Stalk says, we all do. The response is, again, is it okay that my grandma and I load up my things? Mr. Stalk says, yes, and I will be there to help and support you. The response is, I ask you, could we be alone? I do not want you things. Mr. Stalk says, I will not bother you, but I have a responsibility to you and that isn't changing. And the response to Mr. Stalk is, I will get my cell changed tomorrow. Thank you. My family would like to be with me and I'm asking that you understand that and let me get them. I want my mom's things too because we wear a lot of the same things and I have all my memory boxes. What day can I get everything alone? Mr. Stalk replies with, is mama not coming home? Do you know something? Because we know nothing. And the response is, that's funny because the lady showed me your thread. Um, based on the context of, of this text exchange from Mr. Stauk to um, Harley Hunt's phone, um, in your mind, does it appear that Mr. Stauk thinks he's talking to Harley Hunt? Um, it appears Mr. Stauk um, thinks he's talking to the defendant. Okay. And then 9.25 p.m. to 9.33 p.m., what is that entry? Just a continuation. Um, the response to Mr. Stalk is, please tell me I can get my things privately so my family can spend their money on a ticket and a rental truck. I have to tell them. Mr. Stalk says, tell them what? The response is, I asked, could I arrange a time to come privately with my family to get belongings? Mr. Stalk says, tell who? And then the response is, my grandma. And Mr. Stalk says, anyone can come, but I will be there and a cop can be there too. And the response is, no one would take anything of yours. And Mr. Stalk says, Harley, I'm not worried about that. I have a responsibility here, and this is the right way. The next entry is 9.30 p.m. to 9.33 p.m. Uh, tell the jury about that entry. This, is, this concludes this conversation and, and the day. Um, so um, Harley and the defendant and Ms. Sanchez are all at Ms. Sanchez's residence. And this is the last of the messages between Harley's phone and, and Mr. Stalk's phone for Wednesday. It begins with, okay, could it be just you and no one else? Mr. Stalk replies, yes. And the response is, and no one wants to talk, so we ask that as well. Mr. Stalk says, okay. And the response is, thank you, I will let you know when. Mr. Stalk says, okay, still can't find Gannon, BTW, which is for by the way. And is that the last entry on this timeline, page two of two of People's Exhibit 698? It is. Okay. And your honor, um, that's what I was just going to say. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we will take our afternoon recess. If I can have everyone back in the jury room at 325, we should be able to start on time at that point. Again, don't discuss the case among yourselves. Don't discuss the case with anyone else. Don't do your own independent research about any aspect of the case. And with that, we'll see you back at 325. All rise for the jury, please.
may all be seated. Mr. Clark, you can step down if you would like. Uh, I'll just say everybody at 325. That's the small hand on the three, big hand on the five. <laughs> all rise.
79, really? Well, last week it was 63 and now it's 79. Maybe we can split the difference. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All rise for the jury, please. <clears throat> You may all be seated. Court will recall 20 CR 1358, uh, People versus Letitia Stout. Record should reflect the jury has returned to the courtroom. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I'm uh, again, I'm sorry about the climate conditions. Um, last week we were 63, now we're at 80 degrees. Um, so I don't know, maybe there's a, maybe we can split the difference somewhere, I don't know. But um, I will give uh, counsel, I know it's hot and I know that jobs are difficult. I'm gonna give counsel the options to remove their jackets if they wanna do that. Okay, so, thank you, Judge. Uh, if, uh, cause I don't want anybody falling over. So, <laughs> I just assumed me. That... <laughs> No, you gotta keep the tie on. You gotta keep the tie on. I just assumed the court thought that we all had earned a beach vacation and so wanted to raise the temp in here. Yeah. May I proceed, Your Honor? You may, go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, we had just finished, Mr. Clark, People's Exhibit 698, page two of two. Now we're jumping to People's Exhibit 699. <clears throat> and the, those last uh, timelines, were they more dense as far as information that was included on them as opposed to what we're going to see now going forward? Oh, by far, yes. Why is that? A lot more data points that were significant to uh, the investigation occurred during that time frame. Uh, and what about the fact that uh, there's no more telematics for the Tiguan? There's no more call detail records for the defendant's Colorado phone. Does that also play a role in this? Absolutely. All right. So when we start to look at people's 699, looking at the key again of sources of information for this exhibit, what are they? Uh, it's Mr. Stalk's phone download and Harley's phone download. And looking at the uh, timeline uh, brackets, what day is this? This is Thursday, January 30th, uh, and this encompasses significant events for the whole day. All right. Let me get to a good Zoom level here. All right. So the first entry on this, um, there's no time listed there. Why is that? Um, so the uh, defendant and Harley are still at uh, the Sanchez residence. Uh, that's where they stayed the night. And then the first entry with the time is at 4.38 a.m. What is that information? That's Harley quitting her job at uh, Massage Envy. So it's a message from Harley's phone uh, to her supervisor at 4.38 a.m. that reads, I wanted to say that I thank you for being supportive and for our time at work. I know I provided an initial date that was for me leaving for BMT, which is basic military training. At this time, Harley was supposed to go into the Air Force. But due to safety concerns with my family situation, I need to take care of myself and make sure I am safe at this time. I hope you understand that this was an extenuating circumstance and hope that I can leave the company with a great relationship and future references. Thank you. Um, when we think back to the testimony from Harley Hunt, um, who by indications of the investigation, actually penned that text message. Uh, this message was authored by the defendant. And I should have asked at the beginning, but uh, the blue line indicating Gannon is missing, does it extend for the period, the total period of this particular day as well? It does, Gannon is still missing. Um, 7.57 a.m. to 8.57 a.m. is the next timed entry. What is that entry? 
These are more messages between Harley's phone and uh, Mr. Stout. And it starts with, my life was threatened on social media and told how people are looking for me. My grandma has threatened me. So I do understand the pain and scaredness, but my mom did not do anything to harm Gannon. You should know that. I can come this afternoon to get my things. Mr. Stout replies with, none of that is by me. You are always safe with me and you know that. And the response is, not by you, but you could stop it. Mr. Stout replies with, social media is stupid. You should be with me. Your grandma and them should not have gone on there either. Call me. And the response to Mr. Stalk was, I did and you didn't answer. And Mr. Stalk says, no, I just called you and went straight to voicemail, uh, VM. Harley, you are 17 and you are my responsibility. I know you are scared and confused about all this, but I'm making this very clear. I'm asking you and Amy to come see me. I need to verify your safety. If you leave without seeing me first, I will fear for your safety and have to report it to police as missing runaway. If your mom signed consent, like you said, I must see it ASAP and have a copy and it must specify who you're allowed to leave with. This is the issue I was trying to avoid by sending you to safety yesterday, but you chose to not do that. Either way, maintain constant contact with me and keep me informed of your location. I will not come and try to bother you, but I have to know you are safe at all times. Love you. And let me break in there just so we can make the record clear. You referenced Amy, spell that Amy's name. Uh, A-I-M-E-E. -E. And who is that in reference to? That's Amy Lowry, the, the defendant's sister. Okay. And then picking up there after that text from Mr. Stout to Harley Hunt's phone, what is the response to that? The response is, I'm not scared. Why would you do this when I don't want to be around you? Be with Landon. You turned on my mom. I want to be with my grandma, my uncle, and my aunt. I'm not your child, nor will ever be. And then Mr. Stalk responded with, I disagree, but I respect your opinion. I have to visually confirm your safety. After that, if you decide to leave with your family, we will work through that. Where can we meet? I'm about to go to Lena's school so we can meet there or close to the house. And the response was, you promised I could get my things with my family, and you said no one would be there but you. And Mr. Stalk responded with, yes, but you are not working with me. And for context purposes, when we're talking about this Thursday, January 30th, um, does this coincide with or is uh, what day did it occur when the defendant and Harley went back to 6627 Mandan Drive to get things out of the house? That's going to be the next day on okay. Friday. Is that what they're referencing here in these text messages, though, efforts to go to the house to get those things? They want to be alone. They don't want to be uh, bothered by anybody or ask any questions. Um, they just want to show up and, and take their belongings and leave. And so that the record is clear, they being who? Uh, the defendant. Okay. Uh, the next um, timed entry is at 8.57 a.m. and stretches to 10.37 a.m. Uh, what, what are we looking at there? This is Harley's phone. It's a continuation of the conversation with Mr. Stout. And it starts with, I'm not. You will do me like you did mom. Please stop. You have your car. Give it to Landon. I paid for it all this time. Stop trying to force me to do something. And let me break in there just for reference purposes. The car that's being referenced there, what is being discussed? Um, it's the uh, Volkswagen Jetta. The Volkswagen Jetta assigned to Harley Hunt? That's her primary vehicle, yes. Okay. And then pick up from there. Uh, Mr. Stalk says, I'm not getting into a text battle. I need to confirm your safety. And then what you do from there is your decision. Someone is influencing you wrongly. And the response was influencing me to go with my blood family. We have the same blood. So how is that wrong? I'm safe, so please let me come with my family to get my things. Mr. Stalk says, I have to visually confirm. And the response was, I'm not meeting you. What is wrong with you? I do not want to be around you. I'm afraid to be around you if my mom is not there. Mr. Stalk replies with 1030 at the house to get your stuff. And the response is, I've been asking for confirmation because we need to get a rental truck to transport. We could never get that from you, so we have to make the plans. Mr. Stalk responds with, that means nothing to authorities. Please meet at 1030. The response is, why are you trying to take me? What do you not, I'm sorry, what, what do you get out of forcing me when I hate you now? No one is influencing me. I hate you. Mr. Stalk replies with, not forcing you, only confirming your safety. The response was, you mean nothing to me, none of you. You set my mom up so you could be with your ex-wife. I hate you. Mr. Stalk replies with, well, I love you, and I'm sorry you feel that way. And the response is, 
if you don't want to be with me and my mom, then you can't have me. She is the best mom ever, and she would not harm anyone. You are doing this for control. Mom's attorney is coming to get her things. He will have an order. And just for context purposes, um, based on your knowledge of the investigation, who do you believe to be operating Harley Hunt's phone at that time? I, I believe this to be the defendant. The next entry is at 11.06 a.m. What is that? Um, so the defendant's family uh, arrives in Colorado. They arrive to uh, Denver International Airport, and they rent, uh, specifically her aunt, uh, Brenda Aquard, rents a 2020 Nissan Altima. During uh, the period that this Nissan Altima is in play as being rented by Aunt Aquard, uh, did the defendant have some access to this car by herself? She did. Okay. The next entry is at 1.24 p.m. What is that? Um, this is when the defendant and uh, Harley go to the Marshalls, located at 1760 East Woodman Road. And that's where uh, the Volkswagen Jetta and Harley's phone were seized by the Paso County Sheriff's Office. Does that then now diminish even further points of data going forward uh, now that Harley Hunt's phone is also seized? It does. None of the original data points that we've seen up to this point are in play anymore. We've seized two cars and two phones. And was there telematics associated with the BW Jetta? No. Is that the last entry on People's Exhibit 699? It is. Moving on to People's Exhibit 700. And while I'm zooming in on this, these same exhibits that we're looking at on the screen, are these printed out and on boards um, back on the back wall there? They are. Uh, giving the jury access to them back in the deliberation room at some point? Yes. Okay. Same exact things? Same exact things. Uh, looking at people's exhibit number 700, what are the sources of information for this uh, portion of the timeline? So we have um, FBI CAS data because uh, you may recall uh, Sergeant uh, Roy Ditzler testifying that he placed a GPS tracker on the Altima uh, later in the afternoon on this uh, Friday. And then we also have some uh, American Express financials, uh, some transactions. And the uh, period of time for this particular timeline, People's Exhibit 700, is what? Uh, Friday, January 31st, uh, encompassing the entire day. Okay. And then does the um, Gannon is missing indicator line um, extend for the entirety of this day as well? Yes, Gannon is still missing. Starting at the first timed uh, entry on the timeline at 9.44 a.m., what do we have there? So at 9.44 a.m., the family goes to the Enterprise located at 421 North Chelton Road. And by the family, that is um, the defendant in Harley, along with uh, Aunt Brenda Awkward, um, uh, Mom, uh, Deb uh, Lowry, and then Brother Dakota Lowry. And Dakota Lowry, is that the same person that testified um, in front of this jury early on in this trial? That's him. And they rent a... Uh, 2019 Ford Transit van, and we'll refer to that as van number one uh, for the next uh, essentially 24 hours. And why do we have to designate van number one and then a secondary van number two? Uh, because tomorrow, um, on Saturday, the defendant rents uh, a similar van, but from budget. Okay. And that's van number two. 11.19 a.m., what's the entry there? So we're on Friday, 11.19 a.m., um, the van with the family and the Nissan Altima with the defendant, um, and the family means all of them, uh, they all arrived to 6627 Mandon Drive to uh, take out the defendant and Harley's belongings. And then the next entry at 1210 p.m., what is that? That is when the KKTV interview was done uh, by Spencer Wilson uh, with primarily the defendant and with a brief appearance by uh, Harley. And we heard testimony from Spencer Wilson on that point as well. Is that right? We did. And then in the frame, you actually see the back end of the van number one. Uh, how many times roughly uh, during that interview did the defendant um, reference Gannon's name? You um, know, it was, a, it was nine to 12, if I remember correctly. And it do was, you have, I'm sorry, finish your sentence. I, I think it was less than, it was no more than 16. I think 12 is the number that, that comes to mind. And then um, how many references um, by the defendant to I, me, or my? Do you have any idea? It was over 100. Okay. Uh, the next entry is at 3.26 p.m. and 3.38 p.m. What is that information? Um, so after the interview, 
um, the family with the uh, two vehicles return to where they're staying, which is the uh, extended stay of America located at 5855 Corporate Drive. Um, and we know that the defendant stayed in room number 103. And so they arrived there at 326 and the tracker went on the Nissan Altima at 338. And then looking above the line, there's a reference to cash report page 43. Why is, it, why is that particular page significant for this portion of time on the timeline? The uh, Altima returns to the S-curve. All right, so going below the line, um, looking at 345 PM, what is that indicating? Um, so the tracker was placed at 338. Less than 10 minutes later, the Nissan Altima departs the extended stay and starts traveling north on I-25. Based on your um, understanding, um, who was in control of the Nissan Altima at that time? The defendant. Uh, there was some testimony uh, during Harley Hunt's testimony about the defendant and, and actually also with Dakota Lowry leaving for a period of time and, and nobody knew where she was. Is that this period of time that we're about to talk about? Yes, it is. All right. Uh, the next timed entry is 4.41 p.m. What is that? That's the Nissan Altima pinging um, with the GPS tracker at the S-curve. And what is the, the time brackets uh, where the, this Nissan Altima goes up to Southern Douglas County to that S-curve and then returns back down? Uh, it's, it's not long. We got from 4.16 um, p.m. where it went further north and then double back to uh, 5.13 p.m. So it's about an hour. Okay. And then the next entry is at 5.37 p.m. to 5.41 p.m.? The Nissan went through the Starbucks drive through located at 1150 Interquest Parkway. Um, and so we have GPS data and we have a financial transaction from American Express for $5, I think. And so this is after the Nissan Altima is at the S-curve, goes to Starbucks? Yeah, it, it goes to the S-curve and then comes back down and goes to Starbucks. Um, based on your knowledge of the investigation, um, what did the defendant do up at uh, the S-curve? So this is when we believe that um, the defendant picked up the suitcase that had Gannon in it uh, from the S-curve. And then uh, subsequent to this, so after this point, uh, is that when the board was found at some point later on in the investigation? Yes, uh, we, we found a uh, piece of the board, which I testified to a couple weeks ago, uh, that matched the, the photo in Al's phone of uh, the same type of board, same shape, same damage, that kind of thing. Uh, I, I believe it's the same board. Okay. Um, that was found uh, at the S-curve uh, in a little ravine. The next entry at 5.56 p.m. to 6.19 p.m., what is that entry? Uh, the vehicle goes to Petco, the same one that um, the defendant went to with Gannon in the red truck on uh, Monday, located at uh, 5020 North Nevada Avenue, and there was a financial transaction for $32. And then the last entry at 6.23 p.m. to 6.26 p.m., what is that? Uh, it, it arrives back to the extended stay and then parks at its final spot uh, for the night at 6.26 p.m. All right. Is that the last entry for the timeline of 690, I'm sorry, 700 on January 31st, 2020? Yes, this takes us through Friday, January 31st. Moving on to People's Exhibit 701. What are the sources of information for People's Exhibit 701? So we have the cast report um, because um, the, the tracker is still on the Ultima at this time, um, but the van that the defendant rented from Budget has a uh, built-in GPS tracker on it that uh, pings every six hours, as well as a power-up event that occurs every you know, 24 to 25 hours. And then we also have uh, USAA financials as well as American Express financials. Those, the USA financials and the American Express financials, are those accounts associated to the defendant? To the defendant, yes. Okay. Same for the other exhibits that have the same information on them? Correct. The blue line indicating Gannon is missing, does that extend for the entirety of this timeline as well? Yes, Gannon is still missing, and this timeline covers the period of uh, Saturday, February 1st through February 4th. Okay. Starting with the first uh, timed entry, you have that. Uh, squiggly line and then 8 a.m. What do you have? Why do you have the squiggly line there again? So the information that we have is that the van, van number one, uh, with Dakota, Lowry, and the defendant in it, departs the extended stay right around 8 a.m. 
And where do they drive, go to? They drive to the budget, um, which is located at 140 East Garden of the Gods Road, where the defendant rents a, a van number two for $679 using the American Express. Does, does that coincide with the testimony that we got from the person from budget about that van rental and went through the receipt and all of that sort of thing? Uh, from him as well as uh, her brother, Dakota. Okay. And then I just want to have you point out uh, visually the two different vans. Do they look different on the uh, timeline? They do. So van number one has windows. Van number two does not have windows. Um, this is more accurate depiction of what van number two looked like, the one that they drove uh, to South Carolina. Okay. And then moving on to 10, 10 a.m., uh, there's a line above that goes to cast report page 45. Why is that significant for that timeline? Uh, the van has left Carl Springs area and is at the Love's uh, gas station just outside of Pueblo. Uh, is, is that, uh, what's the source of that information? That's gonna be the ping data from the built-in GPS tracker on the van that uh, budget places on their vehicles that go out of state. Okay. <clears throat> And does that show a purchase being made at that Love's Travel Center in Pueblo? Yes, so we have a coinciding purchase for $8.34 at the time that the van uh, gives a ping. Okay. The next timed entry is 11.57 a.m. to 12.20 p.m. What is that entry? Um, so this is when the defendant and Harley go to the Walmart uh, located at 2921 Topol Drive in Trinidad, and the defendant purchases phone number two. It's a uh, prepaid Verizon wireless phone. Uh, with a 407 area code and there's a corresponding charge from the USA account for $89.03. There was testimony uh, from uh, the person that searched that van back in Rhode Island um, and there was a Verizon prepaid calling card in that uh, glove box. Do you remember that? I do. Did you do some research on that particular item? I did. What did you find when you researched that um, calling card? We wrote a search warrant to Verizon for the numbers that are on the back of the prepaid card and it confirms that it links to this prepaid phone purchased at the Walmart on, on this day and time. You have a time zone change there. Uh, why'd you put a time zone change? Um, we're moving from mountain time to central time. She's now driving uh, through Texas. All right. The next timed entry, 7.49 p.m., is above the line referencing cast report page 48. Why is that significant for that time um, frame? So this is now, instead of AT&T like we saw earlier, it's now her Verizon phone, phone number two. Um, we have, works the same, same technology. You have a date and a time, a cell phone tower that provides service to the phone, and then a direction, a sector, as to uh, where that phone is at. So the cash report shows phone number two, the Verizon phone, purchased at the Walmart earlier that day, um, at the uh, um, hotel where they stayed the night. And then going forward now, are we going to have potentially two sources of data, both the GPS information from the van and then uh, call detail records for this phone that was bought in Trinidad, Colorado. Uh, yes, that's what will be in the cash report, and then we'll also have financials that'll be on the timeline. Okay. The entry at 11.10 p.m., what is that? Uh, so that's the six-hour scheduled ping for the van, and it's in the parking lot of the Candlewood Suites, located at 18 Western Plaza Drive in Amarillo, Texas, and we have a corresponding charge a few hours earlier for $91. The next, next entry, uh, I'm sorry, do we have a date change there? Yes, so they stay the night at this Candlewood Suites, and then the van sits at that Candlewood through the morning of uh, Sunday, February 2nd of 2020, with the scheduled power up uh, to 12 a.m. and then the, the 5, 10, 11, 10 a.m. Um, pings. Uh, does this indicate that they're still potentially at the Candlewood Suites, have not started driving for that day? That's correct. Maybe slipped in or something like that? That's correct. It hasn't moved. Uh, 7.38 p, uh, p.m. Is that the next entry? It is. There's a $25 charge on the American Express. Uh, this time, Candlewood Suites, but in Decatur, Texas. 601 West Thompson Street is the Candlewood Suites. And then we have a corresponding 11.10 p.m. GPS ping. So they traveled from Amarillo to Decatur on February 2nd. Do they spend the night in Decatur, Texas into uh, the morning and day of February 3rd? They do. What's the next time to entry at 3.14 a.m. to 5.10 a.m.? We have the uh, power-up event, and then we have the scheduled uh, six-hour uh, ping alert, and the van is still at um, the Candlewood Suites in Decatur, Texas. And I should have asked you to clarify this, but on those van schedule alerts um, you have in the line, it says stopped, 
stop, stop, stop for those different references. Yes. Uh, why do you have that word stop there and what does that mean? It means it's parked. Um, so uh, we mapped out all of the pings and sometimes it was traveling uh, on the highway. And when it's traveling, um, it gives you um, where it's at and how fast it's going. Um, and so this is just important showing that it's just uh, parked in the parking lot of the hotel. Okay. And then moving into uh, February 4th, did they spend the night in Decatur, Texas? They did. And then the next timed entry is at uh, 1222 AM. What is that? Um, so we're now into February 4th to Tuesday. At 12.22 a.m., uh, the defendant's American Express was charged for $106 at the Cannawood Suites located at 1953 North Cross Lane in Pensacola, Florida. Why is uh, the stop at that Cannawood Suites in Pensacola, F Florida um, significant for the investigation? Uh, that's where Gannon would later be found, uh, in, in, nearby uh, under a bridge. Okay. Let me ask you um, whether you know this or not. Um, was surveillance video like we got the we had the surveillance video from the Amarillo, Texas Candlewood Suites. Mm. Uh, was there able to be uh, video obtained from the Pensacola, Florida uh, Candlewood Suites? Unfortunately, there was not. Uh, it, it had already been overwritten. Okay. Uh, the next entry is at four fifteen a.m. and it goes above the line to the cast report page fifty four. Why is that cast report page significant for this timeline? So. It shows the towers and sectors that service the Verizon phone, phone number two, that provide coverage to the Candlewood Suites where they stay the night. We've got two scheduled pings at 5.10 a.m. and 11.10 a.m. in the parking lot of the Candlewood Suites. But then we had one of those power-up events at 4.15 a.m. And here's where Gannon was later found, and here's where that power-up event occurred. And so sometime between 12.22 a.m. when um, the defendant checked into the hotel and 4 15 a.m the van had moved uh it was less than was it 1.8 miles from that point to where gannon was, was I was gonna say less than two miles yeah, and it's 1.8 miles from that ping to where gannon was found and actually i think i um took you down the wrong path so the 1.8 miles um uh, based on the cast page there do you see the brackets that's from the hotel to the ping it's still, it's less than two miles from the ping to where Gannon was found. Okay. Just want to make sure we made that correction. The 5, 10 a.m. to 11, 10 a.m. Uh, entry, what is that telling us? Those are the scheduled every six hour pings. And those are technically in the Comfort Inn parking lot, but the Comfort Inn shares a parking lot with um, the Candlewood Suites when you look at it on a map. So does that mean that the Candlewood Suites and that Comfort Inn are Right next to each other. Right next to each other with a shared parking lot. All right. What about the the address for that Comfort Inn? It says on the line on that uh, entry eight zero eight zero North Davis Highway Ferry Pass, Florida, whereas the Comfort Inn says one nine five three North Cross Lane, Pensacola, Florida. Sure. Um, that's just it's the same zip code, um, and so that's just how they're uh, registered on online with their address. Okay. Um, I confirm they're, they're right next to each other and then one just faces one street for the addressing and the other faces uh, a southern street uh, for the addressing. Okay. The next entry is 11.44 a.m. What is that? Um, that's a financial. Um, Carly goes in and buys breakfast at the McDonald's, which is um, like less than a block from that uh, Candlewood Suites. The next entry you have is a time zone change. Is that right? That's correct. We go from central time to eastern time. All right. The next timed entry you have is at 11.32 p.m. and it points upwards to a cast report page 56, excuse me, on page 56. Why is that cast report page significant for this timeline? It corroborates what the van pings are saying with the call detail records along with the financials that the phones continue to travel down south and stays in the Orlando area. And does, does the uh, financial show a check-in at uh, an Orlando hotel? Yes, the Holiday Inn. Uh, 11.32 p.m., there was a $315.70 charge made uh, to the Holiday Inn in Orlando, Florida. Is that the last entry on this particular timeline? Yes, so this takes us through uh, Tuesday, uh, February 4th of 2020. Okay. Moving on to People's Exhibit 702.
Again, for reference purposes, what are the sources of information for People's Exhibit 702? Uh, we still have defendant's phone number two, the Verizon phone that you purchased at the Trinidad Walmart, as well as the scheduled and power up pings off of the rental van that, that are in the cast report. And then does, what are, what are the uh, relevant um, time spans for this particular exhibit? So this goes from um, February 5th, which is a Wednesday, all the way till March 17th, 2020. Does this cover then the time frame of uh, when the defendant is ultimately arrested in South Carolina? It does. Does it stretch all the way to the point when uh, Gannon's remains are found under that bridge? It ends when we find Gannon. Okay. So the first entry on this is which day and time? So this is February 5th. It's a Wednesday, uh, 2020. And then you've got a line going up to cash report page 57. Why do you have that going up to that particular page at that time? Uh, this shows where uh, the van and the phone are at during this time. Does this basically just show the, the van uh, and the occupants, uh, Harley, Hunt, and the defendant traveling from Orlando up to South Carolina? It does. They stayed the full day um, in Orlando and then started traveling up um, Thursday the 6th to uh, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. They arrive and they return the van to the budget located at 1400 Cannon Road, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And the van was returned uh, sometime uh, before 6, 10 p.m. because that's when it has every six hour scheduled ping. And then for reference purposes, you have the line going above the timeline to cast report page 58. Uh, does that corroborate the cast report page 58 returning the budget van at the budget rental place in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina? It does. It also corroborates the residence that she was staying at uh, for the interim at the Abernathy residence. Okay. Will you just point that out on the map? Sure. It's right up here. Thank so you, you have this tower with this sector that provides coverage to the Abernathy residence, and you have a van ping here. Okay. And then moving on to uh, the next entry on your map, or I'm, I'm sorry, on your timeline, February 8th, 2020. Uh, what is indicated on February 8th, 2020? Uh, so the defendant gets her third phone, and we refer to this as her South Carolina phone. And was that phone seized during the investigation? It was on and her arrest. Did we have testimony from a detective that uh, was involved in seizing that phone as well? We did. The next indicator is February 15th of 2020. You've got two entries on that. Explain what we're looking at there. So the first one is we find the board um, with Gannon's blood on it at the S-curve on the state on Saturday, February 15th of 2020. Um, also on this day, um, the defendant makes a, uh, a post on her Facebook account. Um, do you want me to, to get into that? Yeah, so that particular post, was that Exhibit 50 that was admitted during uh, Mr. Stout's testimony early on in this trial? It was. <clears throat> what does, uh, was that a video? It was a video. Of what? Of Gannon when they were in Hawaii. Um, He's waving and says goodbye and jumps off of a uh, dock into the water below. People's exhibit, oh, I'm sorry, uh, February 18th on this timeline, uh, you have a indicator there. What is that? This is the first fake polygraph that the defendant tried to obtain uh, where you heard the, the wire, the, the call, where they weren't going to release it because it violated um, their, their policy. Um, and so that's, that's when that happened. And then February 19th entry, what is that? That's when the note was created with the five um, altered questions um, that I uh, talked about this morning uh, from her South Carolina phone in the notes. And that was exhibit 692 that we admitted during your early portion of your testimony today? It was. Um, jumping to February 21st, you have two entries there. Um, explain the one on the left first. The one on the left are uh, uh, some of the messages from the defendant to uh, Nicole Mobley. Uh, who testified uh, during this trial. For reference purposes, um, was Nicole Mobley, uh, remind everybody who Nicole Mobley was. Um, she was the one who uh, kind of feigned a relationship with the defendant and, and, and told her whatever she wanted to hear in hopes to get uh, information out of her uh, over, over uh, um, the TextNow app. And those text messages that you're referring to that came from the defendant to Nicole Mobley, is that what we're looking at there? Yes, not all of them, just, just a few. And what do they say? Um, so the defendant sends a message to Nicole Mobley saying, I need a witness that the guy left. I will do anything. 
I'm not asking you. I'm asking if you know anyone who will. I will give them my life, a reward, or whatever. And then in the second message, the defendant says, he took a suitcase of things and made Gannon wrapped in his cover. And then the third message selected for this was, what if you just said you remembered something suspicious after seeing this picture and explained the description and you didn't think it was relevant until now? And, and those are all captured in exhibit number 233. In exhibit 233, is that the total number of, of messages that went back and forth between the defendant and Nicole Mobley? Those are all of them, yes. Uh, based on the context of that conversation in, in sum, uh, what does it appear from your perspective to be occurring between uh, the defendant and Nicole Mobley at this time? The defendant is asking Ms. Mobley to lie for her to corroborate a, a lie to law enforcement. And then the right side uh, portion of February 21st, 2020, what do we have there? That's when the second fake polygraph uh, was done on, on her phone that I testified to earlier today. Is that Exhibit 692? It is. Uh, we then move on to March 2nd, 2020. What do we have indicated there? That's when the defendant was taken into custody and charged uh, with the murder of uh, Gannon Stout. And, and then you have an indicator for an interview. Was that the interview conducted by special agent at the time, now retired, uh, Jonathan Grusing? That's correct. And then the next entry at Mar on March 4th, 2020, what do we have there? As the defendant was being transported um, back to Colorado Springs, uh, she attacked um, one of our Paso County Sheriff's deputies. And that's the uh, still from the GoPro uh, just before uh, the attack occurred. During the portion of testimony um, from Dr. Torres late last week, um, the defendant made comments about this was Maria actually attacking the deputy. Any indication in that video that um, she was talking in a Spanish accent? None. Did she ever reference herself as Maria in that video? No. And then the last entry on March 17, 2020, what is that? March 17th of 2020, we found Gannon. All right. Your Honor, may I approach and set up the easel? We can turn the TV off. Purposes of um, foundation, this is exhibit 6703. What is it? Um, it's uh, some of the defendant's uh, Google searches on her Colorado phone, phone number one. And what is the date span of these searches? January 21st of 2020 through January 29th of 2020. January 29th for reference purposes, is that when the defendant's phone was seized by law enforcement? It was. Is that why that's the end of the searches on this particular exhibit? It is. Is it fair and accurate? It is. And then as it relates to 722, 720, 721, and 722, uh, what are these exhibits? These are Google searches from the defendant's uh, South Carolina phone, phone number three. Um, 720 spans February 19th of 2020 through February 23rd of 2020. Exhibit 721 spans February 24th, 2020 through February 26th, 2020. And then Exhibit 722, uh, our search is uh, conducted from February 27th, 2020 through March 1st of 2020. These all fair and accurate representations of searches that were found on the South Carolina seized phone? Yes, phone number three, the South Carolina phone. This time I would move for admission of these exhibits 720, 721, and 722 as it relates to the South Carolina phone. And then People's Exhibit 703 as it relates to the Colorado phone. Mr. Cook. No objection, Your Honor. Uh, exhibit 703, 720, 721, 722 will be admitted for okay. approval. Thank you, Your Honor. And permission to publish 703 at this time? Uh, you may go. Mr. Clark, what I'm going to have you do is start by just orienting the jury to what we're looking at, knowing that the jury will be able to take this back with them to their deliberation room at some point. Sure. 
Um, so starting with 703, um, tell them about the different columns. So on the far left, um, you have the date and the time that the search was made. And this is Colorado time because this is the Colorado phone. And so it's local time. Um, and then on the right, you have the words typed uh, for the actual search. And then are these, um, I guess, can you tell the difference when you look at the download of the phone, whether searches have been deleted or whether they're still active mm. on the phone? Yes. So on this Colorado phone, there was just over 6,400 searches done during this time period of, of the phone download. She deleted uh, about 4,500 of those. So we're left with about 2,000 searches that still have a date and a time component with the search. When you delete um, a search, the deleted search is still saved, but the uh, metadata is stripped from it. Um, so there's no date and time component. And so we don't know when the search was made. We just know that the search was made. And so just to um, you know, uh, keep it clean, we are only presenting the searches that we know when uh, they were made. And then as it relates to um, the searches that were referenced in special agent at the time, now retired uh, Jonathan Grusing, there were searches that were referenced in his interview. Were those um, deleted searches that he was referring to? They were. And so does that mean that they didn't have date and time stamps for when those searches were actually conducted? That's correct. Uh, do we know, though, that those searches were conducted prior to January 29th, 2020, when the defendant's phone was seized? They were, yes. <clears throat> And then um, as it relates to, you said, I think roughly 2,000 undeleted searches on her Colorado iPhone, did all of them have any relevance to the investigation that we're talking about? Not all of them, no. Uh, the searches that we have on People's Exhibit 703, do they have relevance to this investigation? They do. Uh, starting with uh, the first entry, uh, what I'd like to have you do is just um, tell us the date and time of that first entry. Sure. So. The first one we selected, and this goes in chronological order. And it's also important to note that all of these were searched at least once. So the first one was January 21st at 9.05 p.m. The defendant searched Landon Marie Hoyt. Is that Hyatt? I'm sorry, Hyatt, yeah. Yeah, and then just so the record is clear, spell the name. Um, L-A-N-D-E-N. -E Marie is M-A-R-I-E and Hyatt is H-I-O-T-T. -T. What is the next search? Uh, same day, but at 9, 10 p.m., so five minutes later, U-Haul truck rental. The next search? 9, 12 p.m., U-Haul trucks rates Colorado Springs, Colorado to Orlando, Florida on January 22nd of 2020. There was, there was a reference in text messages that we went through on the timeline uh, where the defendant said, I should have left last week when I was you know, do you remember that search? I do. Uh, does that coincide with what we're seeing here that the defendant is searching for U-Haul trucks to go to Florida? Correct. And is this roughly a week prior to Gannon being missing? It is. Uh, the next entry, what is that? Um, 9.14 p.m., uh, another search was made, U-Haul truck rates Colorado Springs, Colorado to Orlando, Florida on February 6th, 2020. And so the, the actual date of that search, though, was that January 21st, 2020 also? It was. It was made a couple of minutes after the, the previous one for the rates on January 22nd. Are there two searches next that occurred on January 24th, 2020? Yes. Tell us the time of each one of those two searches. 7.32 p.m., jobs, employment in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, using Indeed.com. And then at 8.01 p.m., sometimes you just leave and take and it's, it's misspelled, it's spelled N-O-T-I-J-I-I-G. Uh, I'm assuming that means take nothing. Is that based off the context of the, of the uh, search term? Yes. Uh, are there then now a bunch of text messages, I'm sorry, not text messages, searches on the defendant's Colorado phone that occur on January 25th of 2020? Yes. Tell us the first one and what time that occurred and what it is. First one occurred at 8.48 a.m. And it's jobs, employment in Los Angeles, California, uh, using indeed.com. What's the next one on January 25th? January 25th is 12, 16 p.m. Now, this is, this is Saturday um, before Al flies to um, Oklahoma. So Saturday the 25th at 12, 16 p.m., find real military singles was searched. 
Is there another search at 12.16 p.m. as well? There is military dating and singles at militarycupid.com. What's the next search on January 25th of 2020? 1.40 p.m. The search was parenting should be four people, not one. What's the next search on January 25th, 2020 and what time? Also 1.40 p.m. I'm overdoing all the work for my stepkids and their mom doesn't help. What's the next uh, search on January 25th, 2020 and what time? It's at 1.48 p.m. and it reads, if you aren't involved in your kid's life, you are shitty. What's the next search on January 25th, 2020 and what time? What 1.49 p.m. My husband's ex-wife does nothing for her lids. Uh, based on context, um, what do you think that the lids actually meant? Should be kids. Okay. Is it a typo basically on the searcher's part? Yes. Uh, the next search at on January 25th, 2020, what time and what did it say? 1.51 p.m. I wonder if my husband's ex-wife is sending me a Valentine's card since I period raise period her period kids. Um, does that coincide with what we talked about earlier with um, text messages um, from the defendant's originating from the defendant's phone having periods instead of spaces sometimes? Yes, uh, it primarily happens in, in a lot of the searches with, with the periods in between. Okay. What is the next search on January 25th of 2020? And one, what time? 1.54 p.m. One day, some people will period wish they treated you differently. What is the next search on January 25th, 2020 and what time? 7.57 p.m. Find me a rich guy who, period, wants me to take care of his kids. What is the uh, next search on January 25th, 2020 and what time? 7.58 p.m. Find a guy who wants me to take care of, period, his, period, kids and get paid. What is the next search on January 25th of 2020? Is at 9.11 p.m. and it's apartments for rent in Fort Lauderdale, Florida on uh, trulia.com. What is the next search on January 25th, 2020? 9.13 p.m., one bed, one bath, apartments for rent in Fort Lauderdale, uh, also on Trulia. What is the next search on one January 25th, 2020, and what time? 9.15 p.m., Craigslist, South Florida jobs, apartments, for sale, services, community and events. What is the next search on January 25th, 2020, and what time? Still 9.15 p.m., South Florida rooms and shares on the Craigslist website. The next one on January 25th, 2020, and what time? 9.20 p.m., South Florida jobs, in quotes, teacher uh, on Craigslist. The next search on January 25th, 2020, and what time? 9.47 p.m., Orlando jobs, Disney, in quotes, on Craigslist. Uh, during the course of the investigation, um, did it become clear to uh, you that the defendant had a, an affinity for Disney and Disney characters? Yes. Uh, the next search on January 24th, 2020? 9.49 p.m., Orlando Jobs, in quotes, manager on Craigslist. The next search on January 24th, 2020? Uh, 25th. Um, still 9.49 p.m., Orlando Jobs, cruise port, in quotes, also on Craigslist. What did I say? I, I think you said 24th. Okay. And, and you corrected me to the 25th. Thank you. Uh, what's the next search on January 25th, 2020? 9.49 p.m., Orlando Jobs Airport, in quotes, on Craigslist. Based on um, all these searches for um, apartments and jobs in the Florida area, um, to your belief, did it appear that the defendant was trying to look for a way to move from Colorado and go to Florida without the family? Right. Um, one bedroom, one bath apartment for rent. That means you're not moving a family of five. Uh, and then do we have searches, uh, three searches that occurred on January 27th, 2020? We do. Uh, tell me the first one on January 27th, 2020. 12.09 a.m. My son, period, burned the carpet. How, period, do I fix it? Uh, is there a period between the fix and the end? There is. I just couldn't see it from this angle. How do I fix, period, it? And then the next search on January 27, 2020, what is it and what time? Uh, 1.03 a.m., son's sick, can he stay, period, home? And then the next search on January 27, 2020, what uh, time? 2.42 a.m., Craigslist, Orlando, Florida, jobs, apartments, for sale, services, community, and events. 
and for context purposes is January 27th, later that day, the day that the defendant called 911 to report Gannon as a runaway. Correct. We have then several searches on January 28th, 2020, is that correct? There are, yes. What is the first one on January 28th, 2020? 4.15 a.m., what is the process for period our what runaway child? And the next one on January 28th, uh, 2020? 4.16 a.m., police steps for our runaway. The next search on January 28th, 2020? 4.16 a.m., po police steps for period, our missing child. The next search on January 28, 2020? Uh, this was the 7, 17 a.m. one, find cheap rental car deals on Priceline. Does this coincide essentially with the uh, defendant renting that Kia Rio at the Colorado Springs Airport on this particular day? Correct. Uh, the next search on January 28, 2020? Uh, at 8, 17 a.m., $37 a day compact car. And then the final search on January 28, 2020? 4.57 p.m., can Nintendo find my Switch? And then now do we have two searches on January 29th? Correct. Uh, tell us the first search on January 29th as it's relevant to this investigation. Both were at 2.34 a.m. And the first one reads, I want immunity because it was gang related. And the second one is this GregHillAssociates.com. She read an article about be careful about being granted immunity and not testifying. And does that um, immunity theme come up um, in the recorded phone calls between the defendant and Mr. Stout during those uh, consensually recorded phone calls that we heard testimony from? Numerous times. All right. I'm going to switch out the exhibits and move on to People's Exhibit 720. Remind us uh, first, before we get started on People 720, the date range that we're going to be looking at for the searches here. So this is from phone number three, the South Carolina phone. And it's from February 19th to February 23rd, 2020. Okay. Um, there were uh, just over 1,300 searches during this uh, time period on her South Carolina phone. We were able to get that down to uh, 377 unique searches. And out of those 377, we're going to show you um, 96 that are relevant to this case. All right. Do we have, it looks like, five searches that are relevant to this investigation that occurred on February 19th of 2020? That's correct. Uh, tell us the first search on February 19th, 2020, and what time? 1.22 p.m., the defendant searched crime online. What is crime online? Do you know? It's uh, the Nancy Grace um, show um, for for. Uh, nationwide uh, exposure crimes. And was there a reference to the defendant being in contact with the Nancy Grace show during some of these recorded phone calls that we heard? Uh, alleged. We don't have any proof that, um, that the defendant spoke with Nancy Grace. What is the next search on February 19th of 2020? At 3.49 p.m., Palmer period, Harold period, Colorado period springs. Uh, is Harold misspelled there? Uh, it is. It's H E A. R L D. What is Palmer Herald, Colorado Springs? It's the it's the newspaper up in uh, Palmer Lake area. So was uh, does that indicate to you that the defendant was searching for news in the Palmer Lake area, which would cover the area where the board was found? It was. This is during our search operations up there. Uh, the defendant was very interested in lots of local news, um, monitoring what our investigative uh, tactics were at the time. And then what is the next search on February 19th, 2020? 7.22 p.m. Does text-free show location? What is text-free? That's the app that um, the defendant uh, requested Nicole Mobley download so they could communicate with each other and where the de defendant sent those messages is to uh, uh, Nicole Mobley. Um, the fact that um, she's searching for does text-free show location um, in your mind, does that indicate an awareness of investigative efforts and, be, and efforts on her part to evade those investigative efforts? Absolutely. 
what is the next search on February 19th of 2020? Uh, 7.43 p.m. How can I make my phone's IP period address hidden? Is address misspelled? It is A-D-R-E-E-S. Again, similar to that last question, does this also indicate um, to you that the defendant appears to have some knowledge that she's wanting to hide information from the investigation? That's correct. What is the next search on February 19th, 2020? 8.11 p.m., the search was send a fake email. And then do we have two searches on February 20th, 2020? We do. What is the first search on February 20th of 2020? At 6.51 a.m., how long will fingerprints stay on an object? What is the next search on February 20th, 2020? 8.49 p.m., I need a fake ID that's legit. Then do we have uh, a bunch of searches on February 21st, February 21st, 2020 that are relevant for this investigation? We do. What is the first one on February 21st? 6.43 a.m., children trafficking to period, Mexico period, from period, and it's misspelled Colorado. It's spelled C-O-L-O-R-O-S-D-O. And does this roughly coincide with um, references by the defendant in some of these recorded consensual phone calls that were recorded by the FBI uh, indicating that Gannon may be, have been trafficked to Mexico? Yes. What is the next search on February 21st, 2020? 6.54 a.m., I need a criminal polygraph. And the next one on February 21st, 2020? Uh, a few minutes later at 7.08 a.m., I need a fake criminal polygraph. The next one on February 21st, 2020? 7.21 a.m., fake polygraph test. The next one on February 21st, 2020? 7.35 a.m., can you get away with fake lie detector, and it's misspelled, D-E-T-E-X-T-O-R website. The, these searches for um, needing a criminal polygraph, fake criminal polygraph, fake criminal polygraph, and can you get away with a fake lie detector test, uh, does this indicate uh, in your mind that the defendant had some awareness of trying to evade uh, the investigation in this case? Yes. What is the next search on February 21st, 2020? Um, 9.52 a.m., Gannon Stalk, El Paso, period, searching in landfill. Was there, in fact, searches of landfills um, trying to locate Gannon's remains? There were. Uh, was that publicized? Um, briefly, if I recall right. And then what is the next search on February 21st, 2020? 11.26 a.m., search efforts for Gannon Stout. The next one on February 21st, 2020? 6.46 p.m., I need, and it is misspelled uh, M-E-E-D, to change my look to hide. And the next search on February 21st, 2020? 6.47 p.m., face disguise. The next search on February 21st, 2020? 6.49 p.m., full face and then change, but it's misspelled C-H-A-M-G-E. And the next search on February 21st, 2020? 6.51 p.m., first face transplant woman. The next search on February 21st, 2020? Also at 6.51 p.m., full face transplant. The next search on February 21st, 2020? 6.51 p.m., face, but it's misspelled, F-A-V-E, transplant near me. Uh, the next search on February 21st, 2020? 6.53 p.m., full face plastic surgery. The next search on February 21st, 2020? 6.56 p.m., full face plastic surgery, Atlanta. Uh, those searches as it relates to this um, plastic surgery, face transplant, and that sort of thing, in your mind, did that indicate um, an effort to change her appearance to evade the investigation? Yes. What is the next search on February 21st, 2020? 7.23 p.m. Meet a guy who wants me to move in. The next search on February 21st, 2020? 7.24 p.m. Find a man with a place to let me move in. And then do we have, uh, let me see, four searches on February 22nd, 2020? Yes. What is the first one? 9.50 a.m., change my facial appearance, but appearance is misspelled A-P-P-E-A-R-M-C-E. 
in the next search on February 22nd, 2020. Also at 9.50 a.m., drastic ways to change your appearance. The next search on February 22nd, 2020. Two minutes later, see what my face will, but misspelled S-I-L-L, period, be with plastic surgery. In the next search on February 22nd, 2020. Also at 9.52, plastic surgery, Myrtle Beach, SC. Did this indicate to you that the defendant is still indicating um, a willingness or, or want to change her appearance to evade the investigation? Yes. Uh, and then do we have four searches on February 23rd, 2020? We do. What is the first one? 3.08 a.m., Gannon Stout found. Was he found on February 23rd? No. Uh, what's the next search on February 23rd, 2020? 8.24 a.m., replacement passport. The next search on February 23rd, 2020? 3.15 p.m., shock from period, watching someone get shot. Is someone misspelled? Uh, yes, it's spelled S-O-M-E-O-K-E. -E. Is this the first indication that we have? Um, well, let me back up a little bit. Gannon's body still had not been found by this time, right? Not yet. Uh, is this the first indication that we have of consciousness by the defendant of Gannon being shot? Yes. And then the final search on February 23rd, 2020. 5.13 p.m., face mask that looks real to disguise. Is that the last search on that exhibit? Yes. I'm going to switch them out and move on to 721. What are the uh, date ranges for People's Exhibit 721? So again, uh, still from the South Carolina phone, phone number three. February 24th, 2020 through February 26th, 2020. We have uh, what looks to be seven searches on February 24th, 2020. Yes. What is the first one? 9.14 a.m. GoFundMe, Keisha and Harley support, but support is spelled A-U-P-P-O-R-T. And the next search on February 24th, 2020? Uh, 123 p.m. How long does it take to get DNA? Next search on February 24th, 2020. 124 p.m. How long does it take to get DNA from crime? And the next search on February 24th, 2020. Also 124 p.m. How long does it take to get DNA results from a crime scene? The next search on February 24th, 2020. 126 p.m. How long does it take police to get DNA results. The next search on February 24th, 2020? 1.39 p.m. How long does it take police to get DNA results in Colorado? And then the final search on February 24th, 2020? 1.39 p.m. How long does it take police to get DNA results in Colorado Springs? And then are there five searches of relevance to this investigation that occurred on February 25th of 2020? There are. What is the first one? 5.49 a.m make a security video. And the next one on February 25th, 2020? Also at 5.49 a.m., make a security video past tense. Um, as it relates to that particular search, um, in your mind, did, does it appear that somebody is trying to create a, what would look like an old security video to throw off the investigation? And, and alter it to whatever narrative you want it to fit, yes. Okay. Uh, the next search on February 25th, 2020? 4.12 p.m., I need a new social security number to hide. The next search on February 25th, 2020? 4.28 p.m. Apply for a social if I live on an Indian reservation. And then the final search on February 25th, 2020? 6.56 p.m. Cadaver dog. And then the remainder of the searches on this exhibit 721, do they all occur on February 26th of 2020? They do. All right, let's start with the first one. What is it? 6.18 a.m. Do they check in ditches under bridges? The next search on February 26, 2020? 618 a.m. Maintenance under ditches under bridges. The next search on February 26, 2020? 657 a.m. Can I get a plea with no jail time? The time is misspelled, just I-M-E. 
The next search on February 26, 2020, 7 a.m. Criminally negligent homicide in Colorado. The words criminally, criminally negligent homicide, are those very specific words that people familiar with the criminal justice system would be more aware of than regular people in the community? He's a crime analyst, Judge. Yeah, but I don't know that that, you would need to lay some different foundation for his knowledge of general community versus, I guess not general or legal community, I guess. I'll, I'll withdraw the question, Judge. Okay. <clears throat> the next search on February 26, 2020, 7.30 a.m., can I find a rich guy? The next search on, I'm not sure what's so funny over here, Judge, but uh, a lot of interruptions coming from uh, my left. Uh, the next search on February 26, 2020, 8, 10 a.m., can they trace Snapchat? The next search on February 26, 2020, 8.30 a.m., Colorado closed cases. Is Colorado spelled correctly? No, it's misspelled C-O-L-R-O-A-D-O. -O -O. Uh, the next search on February 26, 2020, also at 8.30 a.m., Colorado misspelled C-O-L-R-O-A-D-O, -O -O, Springs misspelled S-P-R-I-N-G-S, closed murder cases. The next search on February 26, 2020, 8.33 a.m., drug cartels in period Colorado period Springs. Does this coincide with uh, those consensually recorded phone calls that the FBI was involved with, uh, wherein the defendant starts to introduce the idea that potentially a drug cartel was involved with Gannon's disappearance? Yes. The next search on February 26, 2020, 8.48 a.m., make my phone get a call, misspelled the C-A-L, from Mexico. The next search on February 26, 2020, 8.51 a.m., Fake a call, period, from Mexico, period, drug, misspelled, S-R-U-G, cartel. The next search on February 26, 2020. Also 8.51 a.m., fake a call from Mexico, drug, cartel. The next search on February 26, 2020. 8.53 a.m., bluff my call app. Are you familiar with uh, what that means, bluff my call app? I am. What is that? It's an app you can download that makes a different phone number show up on the caller ID of the recipient's phone. Uh, is that typically used in your experience to um, trick somebody into not knowing who is making a phone call? I've seen it a couple of times in like stalking cases where they use this app or an app very similar to it to mask their number. The next search on February 26, 2020. 8.54 a.m. What are some Mexican drug, misspelled S-R-U-G, cartel phone numbers? The next search on February 26, 2020. 9.13 a.m. What do they do when they find a person body in another misspelled A-N-I-T-H-E-R state? The next search on February 26, 2020. 9.13 a.m. How do, period, they identify misspelled I-D-E-N-I-F-Y bodies found misspelled F-O-U-N in another state? And the next search on February 26, 2020, 9.33 a.m., make a fake Snapchat video. The next search on February 26, 2020, 10.45 a.m., can the FBI go period to period Los Canos? What is Los Canos? I think it's a city in Mexico. Uh, the next search on February 26, 2020, 10.53 a.m., create a recording of someone's voice and change the words and create is misspelled C-R-E-A-T. The next search on February 26, 2020. 10.55 a.m., add someone's voice in a video. Is someone's misspelled? Uh, it is, S-O-M-E-O-N-E-S. -E -E Does this indicate to you that uh, whoever is doing these searches is trying to um, change a video? Correct. Uh, to add voices that weren't necessarily caught on the video? Correct. The next search on February 26, 2020. 10.56 a.m., change someone's words in a video. The next search on February 26, 2020. 2.38 p.m., Bahamas marriage certificate. And the final search on February 26, 2020. 2.40 p.m., I need a fake marriage license. Is that the last search on People's Exhibit 721? It is. I'm going to switch them out and put up 722. Take out the light first. Currently, uh, 
date ranges for people 722? Um, the date ranges are February 27th through March 1st. And this is still off of phone number three, the South Carolina phone. Are there seven searches that occurred on February 27th, 2020? There are. What is the first search? 7.03 a.m. How do police tell whose body has been found? Um, considering the circumstances in this case uh, where Gannon's body had not been found for uh, a number of days, uh, almost two full months, uh, does that seem to indicate from your perspective uh, some knowledge that uh, it's going to be difficult to identify Gannon's remains? It, it indicates to me that there's research being done to see how difficult uh, it would be. What is the next search on February 27, 2020? 7.58 a.m. Can God help me escape jail time? And escape is misspelled E-S-C-A-O-E. -E. The next search on February 27, 2020? 8.05 a.m. How do, period, they identify whose, misspelled W-H-L-S, blood is at the scene? The next search on February 27, 2020? 8.35 a.m. Find people who want to go to, period, jail. The next search on February 27, 2020? 8.58 a.m. Spanish girl names. Is Maria Sanchez a Spanish girl name? Very traditional, yes. Is little Lucia potentially a Spanish girl name? Lucia is, yes. Uh, the next search on February 27, 2020? 9.04 a.m. Petco, Nevada, Colorado Springs. Was that a point of reference in this investigation? Three times. And then the final search on February 27, 2020, what is it? 10 a.m., find an immigrant who will admit to a crime. And then are there a number, let me count them, one, two, three, 11 searches that occurred on February 28th. There are. That are relevant to this investigation. Yes. What is the first one on February 28th, 2020? 7.02 a.m., how long does a body start to decompose in a bag? Does that indicate um, specific knowledge about the condition in which Gannon's body was packaged and discarded? Yes. In what way? He was found in a suitcase. Uh, the next search on February 28, 2020? 7.03 a.m. What does, misspelled W-G-A-T-F-O-E-S, what does a dead body look like after a month? And is this basically one month after Gannon had went missing? Yes. What is the next search on February 28, 2020? 7.04 a.m. What does a dead body look like after a month, spelled correctly this time? And the next search on February 28, 2020? 8.12 a.m. Active drug, misspelled D-R-I-G, cartels in Mexico. The next search on February 28, 2020? 8.23 a.m. Bluff my call free. What is the next search on February 28, 2020? 8.33 a.m. Address of period drug cartels and drug is misspelled D-E-U-G. And then the next search, what is it on February 28, 2020? 8.36 a.m. Current drug cartels misspelled D-E-I-G in Colorado misspelled C-O-L-O-R-A-O-D Springs misspelled S-P-R-I-N-S-G. What is the next search on February 28, 2020? 7.44 p.m. How period does the FBI find people and people's misspelled P-E-O-O-P-L-E? -O -O -E? Did the defendant find out how the FBI finds people in this case? Oh, she found out. Uh, what is the next search on February 28, 2020? 7.49 p.m. How period does the FBI find fugitives? And the final search on February 28, 2020. 7.49 p.m. Um, well, and there, there's two more. I'm sorry. How period does the FBI find fugitives? And then how fugitives avoid capture? Are those both at 7.49 p.m.? Correct. And then do we have now three searches that occurred on February 29th, 2020? We do. What is the first one? Casey Anthony. What time was that? 6.27 a.m. And just for reference sake, um, who is Casey Anthony? Uh, Casey Anthony was a wildly um, uh, in the news case where a uh, Casey Anthony is a mom who stood trial for the murder of her uh, young daughter, Kaylee. And then the next search on February 29th, 2020? 6 to 9 a.m. Casey Anthony and Patrick McKenna. Uh, do you have any idea who Patrick McKenna is? I don't. Okay. 
and in this next and final search on February 29, 2020, that is relevant to this investigation. 1.30 p.m., when does FBI take over a case? <clears throat> and then the final searches on this Exhibit 722, do they all occur on March 1st, 2020, as it's relevant to this case? They do. What is the first one on March 1st, 2020? 3.58 p.m., how to make my fingerprints not scan. The next search on February, I'm sorry, March 1st, 2020? 4.03 p.m., fingerprint rubber. What is that a reference to um, based on the way you take that? Trying to get uh, fake fingerprints um, so, so your, your fingerprints can't be identified. Okay. And then the final search on February 1st, I'm sorry, March 1st, 2020. 403 p.m., fingerprint rubber to make fingerprint. Here, may I have just a moment? That's all the uh, questions I have for Mr. Clark at this time. All right, Mr. Cook. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Cook. Uh, I just have a few questions. Uh, you mentioned Dr. Torres. You were asked a question about uh, Dr. Torres who testified. Um, and, uh, did you see the interview? Were you in the courtroom when the Dr. Torres or Mr. Allen or Mr. Young was playing the, uh, uh, CH or CMHIP interviews with Ms. Stalk? Oh, yes, sir. Okay. Was, uh, Dr. Torres, was she one of the individuals that was asking the questions and I guess was behind the glass on the interviews you watched? Yes. Okay. And. Was that at CMHIP? Is that Colorado Mental Health Institute at Pueblo? Yes. Okay. All right. And was Miss Douch shackled in that uh, video? That you, as far as you could tell, she was. Okay. And is CMHIP? Um, is that a facility? Is that a lockdown facility? I mean, people just don't come and go as they please. It's a it's a lockdown facility. I, I would expect it to be, but I've never been there, so okay. I don't I don't know. All right. And talking about bath salts mm. uh, way back this morning, uh, what is your understanding of what bath salts are? Are we talking about I'm having a tough day? I'm going to get some Epsom salt with eucalyptus in it and take a long hot bath. Is that what you mean when you're saying bath salts? I think that's the general term. Yeah, you, you pour it into a bath and it's supposed to help relax or de-stress, things like that. Okay. And were you aware of the other connotation or the other meaning behind bath salts a few years ago? I'm aware that people were smoking it and it was called the, the zombie drug. Okay. Uh, now, were they smoking the Epsom salt bath salts or were they smoking a synthetic uh, stimulant that's now been outlawed? That's my understanding, the second one. Okay, so when you say the zombie drug, we're not talking about people have found another use for Epsom salt and they're ingesting it some way. We're talking about a slang name for a totally different drug. I believe so, yes. Okay. I've never seen it, um, but that, that's how I understand it. Okay. And in the Volkswagen Tiguan, was there uh, ever any DNA of Gannon's found it? in that vehicle? I don't recall. Okay. And do you know if it was tested for DNA? I don't recall. And um, the exhibits we've just been looking at on the boards, uh, and I, I was looking on with on my computer. Now, you just put up what you believe to be relevant to the investigation. Yes. Okay. So, if there were you know hundreds or thousands of different messages or searches being done, uh, how many? Uh, let's see. 
Thank you, Mike. Can I approach the witness, Your Honor? You may. On February 27th, I, I could not see this. Oh, sure. On February 27th, if we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, if we've got seven searches that were done on February 27th, 2020, that were relevant to the investigation, like on the 28th, there were probably 10 or 12 or 13. So let's say an average of 10 searches a day that were relevant. How many of those uh, do you think were irrelevant? irrelevant? Sure. So from the South Carolina phone, there were just over 1,300 total searches. Okay. We narrowed that down to 377 unique searches. And out of that, we presented 96 searches. So okay. whatever 96 divided by 377 is that your, your percentage? Okay. Which is what? I don't know. <laughs> it's too late in the day for me. Yes, sir. Do complex arithmetic. So there was a lot of stuff that absolutely did not relate to this. The vast majority of the searches or the information you got was not related to this investigation, correct? Sure. Out of, out of the 377, we, we selected 96 to present. Just, just a second. That's all I have, Your Honor. Thank you. Redirect. No, nope, don't need it, Judge. Thank you. Do any of the jurors have any questions for Mr. Clark? Looks like we have one coming. Council approach, please. The, yeah, easy for me to say. Uh, to clarify, were the messages saying she left uh, her phone at home sent from defendant's phone or Gannon's phone? Those came from the defendant's phone, saying uh, something effective. Uh, I, I left my phone at home. If you need to reach me, try to reach out on my watch. It may stay connected to Gannon's phone. And then we see them leave approximately 15 minutes later. I will allow uh, reasonable follow up as to that question only. Prosecution. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. All right. All right. Um, all right. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take our evening break. Uh, if I can have all of you in the place that you need to be so that we can start at nine o'clock in the morning, we should be able to start on time. Again, don't discuss the case among yourselves. Don't discuss the case with anyone else. Uh, don't do your own independent research about any aspect of this case. And with that, we will see you uh, tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. I'll rise for the jury. <clears throat> Thank you. May I'll be seated. The record proves that the jury has left the courtroom. Mr. Clark, you can go ahead and step down now. Thank you, sir. Um, Council and Deputy Robinson, approach, please.
and uh, prosecution, what, where are we? So basically, Judge, uh, we're prepared to rest. We obviously need to do that in front of the jury. Right. What I'd like to do before we do that, Judge, we can either do it this evening before we leave for the night or tomorrow morning is just do an audit on the exhibits that were admitted to sure. make sure that we're all scored away as far as that goes. So I'd leave it to your preference whether you want to do that today or tomorrow. Um, I'll, I will give the um, list again to Ms. Gratiano. I think she's the one that's doing the heavy lifting on your side. Um, so I will give that to her. And um, we can check it tomorrow morning okay. uh, and see where we are before we start tomorrow um, and go from there. Um, so you would rest. You have your witness, Dr. Lewis, ready to go first thing in the morning? Oh, okay. Right. Okay. And she's going to be bound by the two regulations. Is that what the issue is that she's uh, got? Or I'm sorry, Niederhauser. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. She shouldn't be a very long then, I would think. Okay. Um, okay. Then we will see everybody tomorrow morning at nine o'clock and see where we are. So before we go to that, Judge, I think um, Mr. Young wants to make for the record on the Dr. Lewis situation that came up from earlier this yes. morning. Go ahead. Thanks, Judge. I did get an email from Mr. Cellini. I just want to read it into the record and give the court an idea of, of what this email is. Okay. I don't consider it to be a report, but it, it reads as follows. Dr. Lewis and I visited with Ms. Stout yesterday for around three hours. The conversation consisted primarily just going over her version of events. There was also talk about a softball injury Ms. Stout suffered in high school where she suffered a concussion and had her teeth knocked out. Obviously, that goes directly to the issues that we're going to be discussing. Uh, and I don't know how I can effectively cross examine her on a three hour interview that she had with the South about the events related to this case when I have no idea what she said. So I would just ask the court to admonish the witness before she testifies uh, that she's not allowed to render any opinions that she may have gathered from this three hour interview with Mr. Tallini and Ms. Stout. Uh, Mr. Tallini did give me a hard drive. Um, I forget the amount of time that he saw. I would quite him to record some of it. I think I got 40 minutes of it recorded before. Well, first of all, um, this would not be a um, uh, Dr. Lewis's contact. Um, with Ms. Stout yesterday could not be considered um, a, an evaluation for purposes of determination of sanity uh, because, for one thing, it doesn't comply with the statutory requirements that any sanity evaluation in the state of Colorado must be audio and video recorded. And it sounds as though, I mean, I'm guessing from what's been mentioned, there's not any question that Dr. Lewis knew that because she audio and video recorded the first one. Okay. This <laughs> well, and, and it won't be because she's not going to be able to testify about it. But um, I think in what specifically is referenced, and I'm looking for it in her report. <clears throat> Unless you can find me somewhere in one of her reports, um, and I have both of them. Okay, so Dr. Lewis's first report is uh, about a and about a three-page letter. Dr. Lewis's second report is a six-page letter. Well, seven if you include the signature. But unless you can show me somewhere in there 
um, that she references was told or had some information about um, some sort of softball incident where she sustained a concussion and had her teeth knocked out, she won't be talking about it tomorrow either. Was it contained in the state hospital? Well, let's, let's go back then to show me in Dr. Lewis's reports where she comments on information. I don't care the source. It doesn't matter the source. Whatever source she's using, show me somewhere in her report where she references that she knew, she, Dr. Lewis, knew that uh, Ms. Stauk had, excuse me, had a softball injury resulting in a concussion and some lost teeth. And she further opines, show me somewhere in her report, that she opines that that event has some relevance to what's going on in this case. Um, absent that, it may be present in some other report, but it's not going to be admissible um, unless the prosecution somehow opens the door. If you think the door has been opened, um, you need to ask to approach and ask if I think the door has been opened, um, and then we'll go from there. But I didn't see it in any of her reports. Um, I do have a vague recollection of seeing it somewhere, and I think it probably was in a CMHIP report, but I certainly don't have any recollection, and I have the reports. Uh, I was looking at them. They were right in front of me. I, I did not see anywhere um, in the information that's been provided by Dr. Lewis that she, A, noted it, and B, somehow came to some conclusion about how important it was or how it related to Ms. Stauk's um, defense of a mental condition in this case. So if you can show me that I missed it, I'm happy to reconsider it. But other than that, she won't be talking about it, and I'll give her the admi admonition before we bring the jury in. Because <coughs> tomorrow morning it sounds is going to look a little strange because we're going to bring the jury in for five minutes. Um, you're going to rest. I'm going to give the jury an instruction about what that means. Then we're going to send them back out. Um, my guess is that Dr. Lewis is going to take most all day. Is that fair? Okay. Um, so, Ms. Stout, you remember that I asked you all those questions last week. It might be that tomorrow I ask you the ultimate question, which is what is your decision? So be aware that that may be a question that you need to answer tomorrow. Do you understand? Is that a yes? Okay, all right. All right, uh, then with that, uh, Ms. Gratiano, I will leave this with you and we can talk about it in the morning. I think we're all pretty close because we did that uh, matchup. It was either last week or the week before and we weren't off by much. Um, so I, th I think we should be okay, uh, but it shouldn't take too very long. Um, so with that, court will be in recess. All rise. Right.